people to travel. But I made it, maybe not for 10,000 people, but for a good couple. And it showed me that my business actually could work. People enjoy Tawasa popsicles. They love Sea Ray popsicles. Who would have known? And from there, I got calls. Since then, it's been a full business for me. If things get slow, I know that, hey, if selling popsicles regularly isn't going to work, schools will always buy it. If schools doesn't work, I could always find some place downtown or Junkanoo Beach. Or, hey, I could always find a hotel. Somebody's going to buy it, right? And there's so many different markets that I found out that I could attack. And I chose each and every single market to attack so that I could be able to bring profit in. And it all started from $10. And my Grammy sour stuff that I didn't have to pay for. I had to fight for it, but I didn't have to pay for it. Okay? And here we have Dario. Dario McKinney is coming from Adam Escapes Bahamas. He's going to tell you his amazing story. Do you guys have any questions before we get to Dario? Anybody? <laughs> okay, so now we have Dario coming, okay? And he's going to tell you more about his journey to Island Escapes Bahamas. Good evening, everyone. Hello. All right, my name is Dario McKinney. Say it again. Say it yes. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Bless it. Good evening, good evening. So I am here from um, Island Escapes Bahamas Limited, but I'm actually not going to start with that um, because that's actually the end result. Well, not my end result, but that's where I am now. Um, I want to talk about where my entrepreneur spirit actually started. Um, I actually opened my first business when I was 18 years old. Um, was it successful? Yes. How long did it last? Not too long, I'll get into that to tell you why. Um, my first business actually was, I opened a mechanic shop. Where did I get the skills to do that? Right here, BTVI. Um, yes, I did go to college, I went to COB, I did finance and banking because that was my real passion. But um, I owe a lot of it to my dad. He was always a person who thought that young men should always have a trade. And believe you me, I don't know if any of you guys maybe thought like this. Um, when he mentioned you need to go and learn a trade before you do anything else, man, I ain't into that. Man. I won't wear my suit, I won't dress up, I won't work in the bank like my good friends. I had a lot of friends who went to private schools, they went to COB, they went off to school or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And hanging with certain people puts you in a certain mind frame. Mm -hmm. So you think, boy, they doing that, man. That's what I into too. All us can dress up, we can wait to the bank to get it, you know, we can get some girls, so we can be living life. Um, it, it didn't work that way. Daddy looked at me and said, listen, COB costs plenty money. It ain't here. <laughs> so he drove me here one day. He said, you see that office right over there? Walk in there, they have a whole list of things in there you could do, exciting things. Pick one, come back outside, tell me what it is. I got $50 right here, you go ahead and BTV. <laughs> I came inside, believe you me, I lugged that list up and down for about 30 minutes. The woman even got frustrated with me right out front. And I didn't see anything I liked. Um, the only thing I might have done, if I saw it, I know they have it now, is marine engine repair. I know they teach it now. And I think they just started that this year, I'm not too sure. But they just added that to the list this year, right? It wasn't there. So the closest thing to that was auto mechanics. So I took that up. I took it, passed the class, I graduated in the top 10. Um, and at that time, I don't know if they still do it, BTVI had a job placement program. They still do that, where they put you on jobs or whatever. Um, when they sent my results to a few of the car dealerships around Nassau, they selected my friend and myself. Uh, it was Quality Auto, actually. Uh, I think they still use that same name, right? They're the people who sell the Hyundai's. Yes. Yeah. Wolf Road? Wolf Road? No. Well, sure. Shirley Street, right? But isn't that one off of Wolf Road? Which one is that one off of Wolf Road? That's the Hyundai's. Auto Mall. Okay. That's Auto Mall. Like, they are retailer, though. The okay. actual deal is, is, is quality auto. Okay. So I went there. Uh, we worked. And a f about a month after that, BTVI sent us some notifications saying that they had some persons coming in town for a special... Um, educational seminar in regards to, there's actually an extension to that course. Um, these guys from a, a mechanic shop in Florida, they came down to teach schematic based diagnostics and um, a few things because there were some new machines came out where you can diagnose cars. That was back then, that was way back in 1998. I don't mean to put my age with that like that, but it was way back in 1998 and these things were still kind of new. Um, so they called us back, they only selected like the, the top 10 persons in the class. And we came back and we did that and I got all this stuff and just like Kentisha said, you have these things under your belt and all this paperwork and all these certificates, and you feel like you arrived. So I took that, and I went to Quality Auto, 
And I say, hey man, I just finished this other course or whatever, blah, 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 to go along with my VTVI certificate. In my mind, man, I said, but can't. I say, nope. You go right in the back there, use a helper. We can pay you this $80 a week. It's like, man, come on, man. So that was my first start. So after about a year, I learned what I need to learn. And this is very important, actually, because a lot of people think when you're going to be an entrepreneur, you can just jump into something and it takes off after a while if you just work out. No, you need knowledge, too. You do need knowledge. You need some background knowledge. You need to gain some experience. All right. So actually having a job is not a bad thing. What you do is you take the knowledge that you learn from professionals and you invest that in yourself. And what you do is you take your extra time and you turn that also into an investment for yourself. You take your extra time and you build your business on the side if that's what you want to do. All right. Having a job, that's not something that you should speak negatively of or have a negative mindset towards because to be honest with you, contrary to popular belief, not everybody can be an entrepreneur. What if persons like Kantisha said, you know something? I'm working for myself, man. I ain't working for nobody. I ain't that salary thing. I can just do what I need to do and just mind my business. You know what that is? That's selfish because she wouldn't be here to teach you guys what she's already been through and what she knows. You see what I'm saying? So you actually do need persons in the job industry or in the job market to actually help other people. So having a job basically, it, it does have its benefits, but we can actually make our country better, any country actually, the more entrepreneurs you have coming up in the industry. Um, if you guys, if, let's say everybody in this room right here creates their own business. And five years from now, all of you guys have successful businesses that are up and running. When I say successful, I don't mean you all flying around in jets and driving Maybach downtown. <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean that your business is up and running. It takes care of you. It takes care of your family. You can put your kids through school and you put your kids through college. They come out of school. They can work for you. That takes a strain off the economy. That makes the Bahamas a better place. It makes it easier to live. I don't know if you guys, when you guys came to, because I actually walked through the school during the registration process before everybody came in. Did you see the lines out there of people trying to get into the school? Yeah, it's, it, I saw it. It never used to be like that, but that's actually impressive. That's people trying to embed themselves so that they can go there and do something. Now, not all of them are going to open their own businesses. You could imagine. I don't know how many people are in the school right now. What do you got about? 2,000? 1,000? Now so ain't big enough for us to open a thousand new businesses. One of y'all in here can have to open some place and hire half of those people who was on that line. Mm -hmm. All right? But it, yeah, you have to. So you have to get out there. You have to believe in yourself and you gotta have to make these things happen. Now, before that whole quality auto situation, I did have a job prior to that. That job helped to get me to and from this school every day, buy my lunch and everything because my dad was a tough guy. He said, all right, I didn't start you off. You was mine, you got to do everything else yourself. Get your lunch, get to and from school, make it happen. So I took a job at another um, mechanic shop. Uh, I don't know if they're still open, but it's called Ingram's Auto. <laughs> at this job, I was a helper, that's what he told me, but I basically worked on projects by myself. The first day I walked into this property, he said, all right, you're going to BTVI? Okay, so you should know your stuff. Tell you what, see that car right over there? Take the transmission out of that. You got two days. I never touched a car in my life. The only thing I know is the theory that they, <laughs> that they taught me inside this school. Now, I want anybody in this classroom to guess how much I was being paid per week. Because I went to this job after school. And some days at BTV, I got out like half day. How much? Well, you close. 30. I was balling. A week. $30 a week. And guess what? I had a top-notch girlfriend. Top notch. But at <laughs> you know what I mean? Top notch. At that time, when I was a mechanic making that thirty dollars a week, and I was going to this school, uh -huh. my girlfriend was Miss C.O.B. Uh -huh. okay. oh. I was up lunch with her on Wendy's Thompson Boulevard okay, in my mechanic clothes, uh -huh. and I had to buy her lunch, uh -huh. thirty dollars a week. Uh -huh. By the time I didn't catch bus one five time and eat lunch two days, I had to pick two days when I could eat lunch because they got a budget. <laughs> I had to pick two days. Probably a Wednesday and a Friday. Friday balling out. Too hot party. <laughs> was, I'm telling you, but it, it, it was rough. And did you believe after almost a, almost a year working there, this guy told me, say, listen, man, we're going to let you go, man. I say, what? We're going to let you go. I say, 
Why? What happened? What did I do wrong? You say nothing. Just paying you too much. <laughs> I swear on everything. I tell you this is what the man told me. <laughs> this is what he told me. So I, I, I had to tug it out for the rest of the school year with some of the money. Believe me, I was able to save some of that $30. And I had to tug it out for the last couple of months. And like I said, BTVI got me into that job program with Quality Auto. And Quality Auto is only paying me 80 bucks. And in the first three months working at uh, Quality Auto, <laughs> I got into an accident. Uh, part of my job was when persons dropped their cars off in the morning at BTVI, they had a van, a courtesy van, where you'd take persons back to work. Back then, for some reason, ladies just loved to buy Hyundai accents. I don't know what it was. That was, that was the Honda back in the day. That was, that was the march back then. You know what's happening. <laughs> and the van, the courtesy van, was a standard shift van. I only drove Stan the Chef like twice before that. My dad was trying to show me or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I was a little sketchy on it or whatever. They actually said, you could drive stick. I said, yeah, man. I ain't trying to nothing now because I won't wait. He said, well, when these people drop their car in the morning, you got to drop these ladies back down. I said, man, I ain't got no problem with that. Boy, I jump in this van. I break it down all through Shirley Street. <laughs> Slip and clutch, Stalling missing up. chef, everything. <laughs> Stalling right out. So the lady in the back say, you can't drive stick, eh? I say, no, ma'am. I say, man, they got to fix this, man. They fix everybody's car. But they ain't fixing their own car, man. You know how these mechanics go, man. So, <laughs> man, the first day was embarrassing. The first day was embarrassing. So I finally got everybody back to work. It took me two hours to drop them right downtown from Quality Auto, which was Shirley Street. Um, come back around, park this car. And after a few weeks, I got better, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But I still wasn't that good. And like I said, one day I got into an accident. It wasn't bad. But I hit this guy's um, car right in front of the business mm -hmm. and the GM of the company was right in the office and they had these big glass windows so we see yeah, like, oh yeah. Jesus what's <laughs> going on you can't even hide you can't even lie yeah, 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 yeah. so <laughs> I in the middle of the road I scratch in my head this guy in the road can't oh bad you making me late for work and blah 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 I don't even know what you're doing in the sky little boy like you blah 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 <laughs> went inside <laughs> GM te tear me to pieces he said yeah, let me tell you what's gonna happen we can fix this man's car right but it coming with your pay why are you only making eighty dollars? <laughs> well, how well, much coming out, Mr. Dom's head? Forty-five dollars. Man, I almost bought to the same thing I was making down the road. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, working and coming up and get the way you need to be in life is gonna be plenty ups and downs, plenty back and forth. Sometimes you're gonna be here, and certain things can happen to bring you here. But the, the trick is not to be discouraged. You gotta believe in yourself. So. I, I, I worked it off, I paid for it. Um, I think about six months after that, something else happened. I can tell you right now what happened. I was still driving this, no, I was driving the company truck. I didn't come up now, I ain't no more van. I driving the company's truck, um, picking up parts. Went to pick up some parts from a machine shop or whatever, blah, 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 blah. Stopped to get some gas. So I pulled my car, I mean, I pulled the truck in the gas station yard. And I said, I gotta run inside to get my hot party, man. I'm hungry. So I got my hot party. Hot party. Well, it's hot party king, but I have anything like. I went inside, get my hot party, and my vitamin or whatever, come out eating my hot party. So when I look at the truck, I'm trying to figure out where the guy going. He didn't stick the, he didn't stick the pump in the truck. I looking at the truck. I said, oh, no, this, this pump look a little, little different, right? <laughs> I said, this, this, this green. Sandalier is supposed to be green. I look for the file, I say, hey bro, um, you put the you put the twenty dollars gas in the truck? He said, gas. <laughs> say, man, it's a diesel truck, man. I said, not that. <laughs> <laughs> Fellow full the truck up with diesel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know many dollars to get it, but you know what happened. <laughs> Listen, that ain't starting, buddy. Ain't nothing happening. No. You gotta drop that tank. Listen, you gotta drop that tank, you gotta drain that, you gotta dry it out, either that or you gotta change the tank. So you know what happened? GM free code again. <laughs> free credo. <laughs> Pay go on back down. And at that time, I'd already gotten, I got a risk. I was up to 150. Wow. <laughs> GM marched me right down again. $75 out the check. So I was back, I was making $75 a week. <laughs> I say, man, what the sick? Man, this ain't making no sense, man. After about almost two years, I say, all right. I didn't learn what I need to learn because the guys who were training me is a helper, you learn a lot of stuff. As a matter of fact, after a while, when they see a company, they start putting work on you. They ain't dealing with that no more. All right, we got him now. I didn't show him everything. So when the cars come in, man, the guy who trained you, he's sitting on the side eating, and he's like, yeah, get that car to get, eh? 
you get any questions, I write you. You can walk around and talk, or you can run and go talk to the girls in the office or whatever. By the time he come back, the car got to be finished. I say, hold on now. I don't want this work myself. And I just making this little 115. It's been almost two years, man. These fellas joking, man. So I went inside, right? I had to do my investigation. I go inside and I say, listen, um, my cousin have one of these cars, right? They won't get it service. How much it is to get this car service? They say, well, the first service is be like 190. One car? Yeah. And the second service is going to be like 240. And the, and the third one is going to be like 330. I'm like, you're serious? I said, a service the car? That time I outside, the fella gave me on a time. He said, you got to service the car in 20 minutes. That means I can be making $330 in 20 minutes? Because I was doing it. Mm -hmm. I said, all right. Light bulb going off in my head. Mm -hmm. Man, listen, I get my money to get up. <laughs> my little $75. I saved that up. But I'm on $500 toolbox. And right next to my property at home, I live, I live in Kennedy, South. It was a vacant property. <coughs> I borrow my uncle lawn more. He cut that grass down with some I cut that grass down. I don't know who them people was, but they're happy. I keep that yard clean. <laughs> Big man, I'm there some a week from then, I had cars pulling up in that yard every Saturday morning. When I dropping them women them the way, listen now. Um I want to pose on nobody, but you see those cars y'all getting service down there, I service them to you know. So you say, yeah? I say, yeah, well I'm gonna choose charge. I say, well if you bring your parts, it'll only be like one one twenty. They say, you serious? I say, yeah. I said, if you was a regular customer, 100. Man, listen. Listen to me. <laughs> I was saying I was in four cars a day. I was making three, $400 a day. Three, $400 a day. The only reason that stopped is because the neighbors, well, they sold the property and person moved into that house and I couldn't operate from that property anymore. You see what I'm saying? And then it was kind of hard to find somebody else, I mean, somewhere else that I could have operated from. You see? Um, so that I kind of put on a back burner, but after a while I got myself a car and I started going to people and servicing or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I did that for a few years. Um, after a while though, I still picked up on my original dream where I said I wanted to work in banking or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I went to COB, did this, did that, and I finished school and I started my first job at, at Commonwealth Bank mm -hmm. back in the day or whatever. And then I worked my way through the ranks or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, after I left Commonwealth Bank, though, I went and worked through an offshore bank for a little while, um, and they happened to close down. This is, the, this is during the time. I don't, I don't know if anybody here would remember that time, but the Bahamas was blacklisted. I think it was shortly after 9-11, and they closed down a bunch of offshore banks or whatever. Our bank was one of them, and our bank actually pa packed up and moved to South America. So they come to me, they like, uh, well, we're packing up. We got to move. We can no longer operate in the Bahamas. We're moving to Ecuador. Grab that light in the corner. It's like, <laughs> what am I going to say? Speaking of Ecuador. Spanish. I say, uh, that's in South America, right? Yeah. Why well, you look at them? Mm -hmm. Maybe want to look at Richard, my girlfriend. I look at them. Mm -hmm. Still jacking with COB, you know. I say, anyway. I say, no, I ain't going to make them move. That, I straight. I go find something else to do. Couldn't find nothing else to do. <laughs> I can't have a COB degree you got. Just like a teacher just finished telling you all. Couldn't find it. The only thing I could have get. Bank teller job to go start back to where I started from. I say, nope, I ain't doing that. In the meantime, um, what I did was I worked with a friend of mine um, doing roofing and carpentry and construction and all kind of stuff. And I put my resume in at the brand new Atlantis. Atlantis opened up. They were looking for young people or whatever, blah, blah, blah. The first job I applied to Atlantis was actually in the construction field when they was building the Royal Towers. And I had another friend who went here, he did another course, the same time I was doing auto mechanics, and he's like, man, I know about all that, man, I don't know if we could, man, they looking for contractors and this and that and blah, blah, blah. I say, nope, we going over there to go try and get one job. So what I did was, I had a new car. I walked from Kennedy Sub to, um, you all know where Wong's Rubber Stamp is? Mm -hmm. Wong's Rubber Stamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chesapeake, Chesapeake Road. Yeah. I walked there, I wake him up in the morning, Bro, you ready? Let's go. We're going on this interview right now. And we walk from there, straight up market. We ain't got no bus money, nothing. Straight up Market Street, all the way to the bridge, and walk over the bridge to go get this job. We did that three days in a row. We ain't get higher. <laughs> we ain't get no job. He ended up working for his uncle. I still didn't find anything to do. I had to go back and work for the guy who was doing the roofing and the construction and the shingling or whatever. Um, almost a year later, Atlantis finally opened the Royal Towers or whatever, blah, 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 blah. So they sent out for all these people to come and work to Atlantis. And what had happened was the persons who were already employed at the, the beach and the Coral Towers, they moved over to the new side of the hotel because they was 
experienced. Um, they also opened all the aquariums in Atlantis when the Royal Towers opened. I don't know if you guys remember that. And they opened it, Discover Atlantis. I applied for that. <laughs> I applied for Discover Atlantis. That's actually where I first met Gantisha. That's, that's where I know her from. I applied for that. They had just opened the department. They was looking for young people who, who had, were friendly and outgoing and speak to people or whatever, blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, I can take this job. I don't know what it's all about, but this pay is absorbing money. You see what I'm saying? I don't think, I think back, at that, back then, it was like, what, 250 a week? Mm -hmm. Man, that's big money to me, man. It's big money. It comes from 175 to 250. Man, I, I ball it. So I took the job. Um, tell you, no joke. I walked to the interview. Again, at that time, I was actually living in Stapleton Gardens. I was living with one of my cousins. I walked to Stapleton Gardens to Atlantis for two weeks. Because during, <laughs> yes. During your, in, during your orientation process, because yes, I went to the interview, I passed or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So when they saw my background, I came this and that, blah, blah. yeah, man, we could use this guy. I need the talk. Yeah. <laughs> so I walked to and from Atlantis for those full two weeks. In orientation, you do not get paid. You don't get paid for those first two weeks. So ain't nothing happening. I'm talking about nothing. Pennies in your pocket. You can't catch no bus, no nothing. So I walked to and from for those first two weeks. As I dedicated I was, I said, I got to get this job. I ain't asking nobody for nothing. You see what I'm saying? And after I got that first paycheck or whatever, blah, 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 things started to look up. Um, I moved somewhere else. I was able to get a roommate. And I started doing a few things after that, blah, 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 blah. That was in 2002. By 2000 and, what's it, 2017? By 2013. You know what my job was at the Atlantis? Concierge? I was a concierge in 2003. It took me one year. I worked as VP? Hotel manager. I was in charge of the Coral and the Beach Towers. I worked, some days I went to work and I didn't come home until the next morning. I had four uniforms in my car. I worked in accounting. I worked as a, I had a, I had a Bellman uniform for the Harborside at the Atlantis. I worked valet, parking cars. I worked in Club Rush. That's no longer open. They have Club Crush now. <laughs> I worked in Disney's Discovery Channel camp, working with kids. Um, and I also worked in the movie theater, serving popcorn. And when I worked in the movie theater, I was an account supervisor. So I got off from work. I worked eight to six, extra hours. And I got off from there and I, worked, I went straight over to the movie theaters, making hot dogs serving popcorn, and sweeping the movie theater at night. And because I worked in all of these apartments, I started to see how the hotel worked together as a whole. I saw the big picture. Mm -hmm. And by the time the interview came around for the hotel manager position, I didn't jump for it, you know, because I never thought of myself holding a position like that. One of my first managers who hired me, Cherise, she's like, Dario, there's a position in the front office hotel manager, I think you'd be perfect for that. It's like, who, me? No, man. She's like, I'm dead serious. She's like, yeah, I know you. I know what you can do. You could handle that. I went and I interviewed and I got it. Next thing I know, three years in, I'm running this hotel. It was crazy. But the thing is, I got into that life. Now, I, you know it was a no 250 then. Money was right. But in exchange for that money, I didn't have a life. I didn't have a life. I would go to work some days on a Monday and I'd leave on a Thursday. When you have a position like that, they tell you straight up front, listen, you have a clock in time, but you ain't got no clock out time. If things going on in this hotel, as the manager, the hotel manager, you can't leave people looking for you to get results. And you can't say, I'm gonna go home and throw that on somebody else to deal with. Nope, that ain't happening. And that's why they give you a phone. <laughs> so as you get that position, you get a Blackberry. There you go, you know what I mean, right? That's it, that's your ball and gin. You could go home, but we can nag you to death. All through the night, three, four o'clock in the morning. Hey, this customer said he talked to you earlier today. You promised them this, you promised them that. You put them in this room, the room leaking, the carpet stink, this, that, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so can somebody fix that? Nope, we need you to fix that. <laughs> and that's, that's what it is. So you exchange your actual time and your life and your freedom for that couple of dollars. Coming down to my final six months doing that, I say, you know something, I can't do this no more.
because I got kids, I don't see them. Even when I'm off, I'm tired. I can't spend no time with them. And I always tell people who get into that entrepreneur mindset, if money is your ultimate goal, you, you ain't gonna make it. You, yeah, you might end up making a whole heap of money, but you're gonna realize after about five, six, 10 years in, this ain't really what I want. The whole reason real entrepreneurs get into being entrepreneurs is because they want freedom. You want more time for you, your loved ones, spend time with your family, your parents, those persons. But if you're working, 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 working all the time, your money, your money getting fat, your pocket getting juicy, you get all these things, all these car park up outside, you only can drive one. And something drastic happens like your mom dies. Where the money is, how the money can help you? What happened to all that time you should have been spending with her? When he was working? Only give you two, days off or maybe a week. two days, buddy. Two yeah, two or three. If you got to travel, he might give you three. And that's it. They expect you to come back to work. You see what I'm saying? I, I didn't been through that. I had people die. I, had, I lost relationships. And when you go to work, and you're sitting down, and you're moping, and you're sitting at your desk like this, and that phone ringing off the hook, and the paperwork stacked up to here, you know what your boss can come in the office and say? We need to talk. What's going on? You ain't performing like you used to. What's happening? They'll pretend for one, five, ten minutes like they really care. So you'll go there and you'll pour your heart out, man. Listen, man. <laughs> me, me and the wife yeah, for can, something. I can, can She doesn't move, vote back up her stuff and go on my young mommy. Oh, wow. Man. I know what you against you. That is horrible. It's good seeing you, man. But tell you what we can do, right? Tell you what we can do. You look like you need some, some, some time off. So, can Tisha wake in tomorrow morning? Well, actually, no. You wake in tomorrow morning. Kentisha off. What I'm going to do, I'm going to call Kentisha. I'm going to ask her. That's all. If she could come in to wait tomorrow, I can give you tomorrow off. And then the day after that, that two days, that's good? No, man. It, 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 man, boss, I, I mean, I ain't asking for no time. I'm just telling you right now, I'm just going through something. All right, then. I understand. I see what you need. You need, you need therapy. You know, Atlanta's up that program. <laughs> call Atlanta's up a self-help program. But you call this number. And they have some therapists from Canada or whatever, they call you and they contact you and they give you therapy sessions over the phone. And that, you'll probably, that's free. You get it for probably about a week or so, whatever, blah, blah, blah. If it didn't work, they send you back in it again. And that's you. And that's the end of that. You see what I'm saying? Meanwhile, your life falling apart, your life in jambles. But your pocket fat, you juicy. You could go to every concert, your car fresh, your rooms clean. You, you get all the gas. I know, I know you're getting this money for them gas. I can see that. <laughs> I can see what's going on. But in the meantime, the real things that matter to you, they can fall out of whack. Now, I want to tell you all something real. Entrepreneurial life. I know you all heard this before from Getisha, because she real. It is easy. But why it ain't easy? She tell you all why? You tell them why? Work a lot. You do work a lot. You do work a lot. Um, but you have things also that are working against you. You have things that work against you. You have people that work against you. Um, I can tell you one thing. You, some of you, depending on what you do, I don't, I don't know your family background, but your number one fan is not going to be your family. Not until you make it. Well, you must not until you get that money. <laughs> and I said, you let them know you get that money. No. Other than that, they ain't, no, I don't care how much interview and thing you going on. That, if you go on TV, your mommy or your cousin, they might call, man, my cousin on TV now, man, you need to come watch this. But if you can't lend them a couple dollars here and there, but it ain't nothing happening. I can tell you that right now. I can tell you that right, right now. Oh, um, boy, my mommy ain't watching this. Listen, <laughs> right now, my mommy will still send me job application. She, once in a while, she send me a little WhatsApp. Um, the airport hiring, you know. Say, mommy, how long have I been waking for myself? <laughs> I, I know, I know, I just, you know. I just, I just say it, they hire him just in case. <laughs> Traditional Bahamian mindset yeah. is, go to school, mm -hmm. get that college education, mm -hmm. get that solid government job so you get that house. Mm -hmm. Get that pension. Mm -hmm. If that's all you're depending on in life, then that's, I mean, ain't nothing wrong, that's fine, you know. But there's something different inside the heart of an entrepreneur. You want more than that. When you become an entrepreneur, like I mentioned earlier, you're not only providing for you, you're providing for future generations. I read something the other day by one of the guys that I follow online. Which one? Grand Cardone. 
I was watching him this morning. As a beast? Yeah. Grand Cadon says, if you can sit back and say, I can't go the extra mile because my kids with me tonight. I can't do this. Something to build your business now. I have my kids tonight or um, I got to do something for my mommy or blah, blah, blah. He said, you selfish. He said, hey, I care how you look at it. You selfish. Because you are cramping your success that are going to help those same kids. You blame that on a five, six, seven year, an eight year old. They don't control you. You in charge of your own success. No man, make it happen. No excuses. You cannot have excuses when you decide to step into this entrepreneur. You gotta come in this like a pit bull. You have to. You gotta get mad. You gotta you gotta hate that past life so much that you do anything. You hear what I say I do to get that job by Atlantis? Mm -hmm. I walk. When last year I ever walk from Staple and over the bridge PI. Man, right. last you need to ask on the first time. <laughs> last. <laughs> <laughs> He's walking for a cause, eh? He's walking for a cause, too. No, man, you gotta hate that. You gotta want that bad, 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 bad. If I, you know, you know what, you know what really pushed me into my entrepreneurship. But I think back and I said, some nights I sat because I, I worked the grave shift too. It got to the point where I, I hated working that type of lifestyle so much. I went to them and I say, listen, I'm gonna take the grave shift. They say, all right, cool, for how long? I say, indefinitely. Give me the grave shift. Everybody else hated that grave shift. That means I got to come to work at 10.45 for an 11 o'clock shift, and I left at 8 in the morning. When people are coming to work, I was just getting off. I took that shift. I took that for two reasons. One, in the night, the hotel is quiet. Mm -hmm. The most you get, you get drunk persons, you get persons who injure themselves, and a lot of weird stuff happens between mm -hmm. the hours of 2 and 5. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I say weird, I mean, like, seriously weird. I, I, I've delivered babies. I'm saying people die. When you're a hotel manager, they actually train you to be a first responder. Your medical training is actually more than just first aid. Mm -hmm. You actually communicate directly with persons at the hospital and in, and in ambulances. So yeah, you, have, you operate an AED machine, an automatic resuscitation. You get, when they say clear and they shot people in the heart come back, you gotta do that. You have an oxygen tank in your office with a bag, valve mask, you gotta look. One night there was a guy partying on a yacht and the hatch on the back of the yacht it was very windy. He had it open. And he put his hand and it go look down overboard. I don't know what he's looking for. And that hatch blew on his finger. These two fingers right here came off. These two right here. I had to go down there because that came under the hotel. Atlanta's Marina is a part of the hotel. I had to go down there. I see this guy holding his fingers and, he, and he's shivering. Like he turning pale. Mm -hmm. Get these two fingers, secure them so he could save his fingers, put them in a little bag, drop that bag in a bag of ice or whatever, mm -hmm. tie that off. <laughs> and get those guys on the phone, listen boy, I better come for this guy, because he looked like he about to bleed out. I said, ready, bandage it up, but you gotta come catch him. He was able to save his two fingers. And these things happen at three o'clock in the morning when you dead sleepy. And you gotta have your senses about you. So, I mean like things like that I'm thankful for because I already been through that. It doesn't get much worse than that. <laughs> um, there was a girl who came down, she was um, with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Make-A-Wish, I don't know if you guys know about that. Make-A-Wish Foundation, what they do is they get people who have these terminal illnesses and they know the exact day and date or the year that they're gonna die. You can imagine that. So what they do is you make a wish. What's the one thing you wanna do before you die? This girl said she wanted to come to Atlantis and swim with the dolphins. All right. Her grandmother brought her down. She came to Atlantis. She saw, I met her. She was like autistic or whatever, blah, 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 but she was smart, man, and very nice. And she came and she told us what she wanted to do. I checked her in and she swam with the dolphins. She swam with the dolphins. She swam with the dolphins on a Friday. Would you believe Saturday morning she never woke up? Hmm. Never woke up. Mother distraught. Jeez. As a hotel manager, that's something you gotta deal with. You in that room, there's a dead body, someone's dead grandchild laying in the bed. And this grandmother's just going crazy. The child's mother um, wasn't involved in her life at all. The grandmother was doing everything for her. Wow. Yeah. So I mean it was like it, they're incredible experiences, you know, but all of that prepared me. It's like, listen, man, I had enough of that. It's time for me to start doing mine. I said, if I could do all of this for these people. All of this for these people. Man, I'm pretty sure I could do this for myself. And I can tell you one thing that happened. For about six months, Atlantis was having a glitch with their payroll system. And every week, I'd have to get my payroll corrected, right? As a hotel manager, you 
fix other person's payroll. You put in the time, and when people swipe in or whatever, blah, 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 and you correct all that stuff, and you make sure they get paid. So I was making sure all of the staff got paid. And I'm talking 30, 40 staff just on the front desk alone. When you don't manage, you manage the whole hotel. So other person submit their timesheets to the front office, and the staff that works under you checks that. So everybody pay was straight. Guess who pay wasn't straight? <laughs> Mine. Because a higher person have to correct my pay. Mm. You see, that's a conflict of interest. I can't go and fix my own payroll. I can add anything in there. But I can't like them boys who's be, you know, doing them things. But no. My pay was not straight for about six months. I'm talking about out of all of the money that I was supposed to be making, working all those shifts, all that extra time, blah, blah, blah. My pay, when I see my pay stub, $150 on my check. <laughs> I back to what I thought it was. So he's like, man, listen, man. I, I went down one day and I went to HR and I said, listen, um, you all know I owe that manager, right? So how you think I'm making $150 a week? Ain't nobody see this? And they give you the run around and this and that and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, man, I said, I can't do this, man. I have big bills. I have things I need to take care of. So what they do is they'd cut a check the following week. <laughs> not, not right then. The following week and add it to your check for the following week. Guess what happened the following week? Check is 150 again. So every week for six months, I get this 150 check and got to wait the following week to get that money. And then hit me again. Why I always get these light bulbs going off? I say, you know something? You realize what you've been doing? You've been working hard as a dog for $150 a week. That's what I've been doing. $150 a week. My bill's late. I had to find that money. Mm -hmm. I can tell you in a minute what I was doing on the side. <laughs> it wasn't a dirty man. <laughs> $150. I said, you know something? If I could survive on $150 a week, and I'm working for these people 80 hours a week, man, I got to go do that for myself, man. This ain't making no sense. So I decided to get out of there. The reason I could have walked off of that job, I put in my notice for two weeks, and I walk out of that job smiling. I walk out the front door. You know you're supposed to walk to the basement? Mm -mm. Checkpoint. Checkpoint. <laughs> Listen, I lose that tie off. I throw that badge on my desk and I walk out the front door of Atlanta smiling. My staff didn't even know it. That was my last day. <laughs> I email them. Wow. I leave everything in my drawer. They say, Someone run you over here. I say, Yeah, me. <laughs> when I switched to that grave shift, I already had another business running. I had a landscaping company. Mm -hmm. I worked um, a few years. I mean, I worked for a few months before I started Atlantis for a good friend of mine. He has a huge large landscaping company and he does a lot of work in Life at Key in Woolfort Bay. Um, at one point we had some jobs to do in Treasure Cove and I saw a system in place that blew my mind away. There was uh, a guy, a Haitian guy who used to work for the company. I knew him. He actually was leaving when I came in. He had over 27 properties in Treasure Cove that he took care of. All the properties in Treasure Cove are pretty much straightforward because you have a building code that you have to abide by. You can't have no big lavish trees and all kind of ridiculous landscaping and crazy stuff. Your bush can't be overgrown. So it has to stay on a certain level. So every two weeks you have the opportunity to cut these people's property. So what he did was he had three guys that would go to each property and everything is in walking distance. One, get a, you get a lawnmower, you get a rake, and you get a weed whacker and you get some garbage bags in your back pocket, right? So you have one guy here, one guy here, and one guy here on the next street. That's three yards getting cut at the same time. Each of those yards cost $75 a piece. Mm -hmm. it, let's say it's only two. If it's only two guys he got working, 75 and 75, and the cut of the yards in Treasure Cove is only an hour. That's, 100, that's $150 every hour. And they work in a full day. They work until 4 or 5 o'clock. So let's say he cuts four yards for the whole day. He only worked four hours. That's $300. If he only works five days, that's $1,500 in a week. These guys is working seven days and cutting three yards in an hour and cutting six, seven yards a day. After about two years, that same Haitian guy, he bought a house in Treasure Gold. Quick maths. And they live simple. He ain't got no big landscaping truck with no dump on the back and this and that and blah, 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 blah. He had another guy, another Haitian guy who came with his F-150 and he'd load the garbage up and he'd take that to the dump. Only $10 to get inside the dump. Mm -hmm. and this fella clocking, he making thousands in a week. And the guys who work for him, I don't know what he's paying them. And you know how they got to work? Bicycle, bicycle don't burn no gas. Mm -hmm. So all he's doing is making money. Mm -hmm. See, we, 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 we get this little bit of money in our pocket and we quick to go big time. Of course. Man, we open this office, you know, you <laughs> hire these people. I want to sit up. I want mm -hmm. these people waking for me. I want, I want everybody calling me boss. Mm -hmm. No, man. He was cutting this yard. He had a street people cutting yards. So actually, I'm incorrect. There was four yards getting cut. Because mm -hmm. he doing his own. 
Ah, and you know who's doing this baby boy? His wife. His wife mm-hmm. was going to the people's house and collecting the money with her paper boy. Mm-hmm. No money is going anywhere, right? Ain't you no know money going nowhere. <laughs> that money going right in that small little circle right there. Mm-hmm. And they doing things and they run the whole place. And from I see that, I say, man, listen, man, that right there, that could work. But that's hard work. Mm-hmm. Plenty of people scared of that. Mm-hmm. But you can't be scared of that. Mm-hmm. You got to get that that's where the money is. Mm-hmm. I can give you a little secret right now. There ain't no big secret to success here or opening your own business. All you have to do is look around, see what it is everybody have a problem with. There's plenty of things in the same little Nassau town that everybody always complaining about. Go on Facebook, just go down. Everybody always complaining about something. Pick one of them. I'm pretty sure one of them, you good at, or so you know somebody who's good at that as well. Mm-hmm. Go hire that person. You might have the business here. See you in the class that start right there. You then smarter than that person because you're doing the actual class. So you know how to run the business side of it. That person have the know-how and the skill to fix that problem. Fix, learn how to fix a problem, a prominent problem, package it up neatly, put some pretty words around it, and sell it. Seriously. And go sell it. Let me tell you about this company right here and how this came about. I can do that real quick because I know these other guys got to talk. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Island Escape Bahamas Limited started off as an idea. I wanted to find something different for tourists to experience when they come to the Bahamas other than sun, sand, and sea. I follow a lot of tourist blogs. I read a lot of books in regard to tourism. Um, I follow the Ministry of Tourism, blah, 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 and tourism channels all over the world. I just love travel and tourism. I travel a lot now, too. Before, I couldn't afford it. Now, I do. I noticed that there are a lot of countries coming on stream that people wouldn't dare think of going to back in the day. And when you look at the things that these countries are offering, they got the same things we got here. People don't like to hear that. Mm-hmm. Belize. Anybody ever heard of Belize? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Belize has coconut trees, white sandy beaches, aqua, turquoise waters, and blue holes. Mm-hmm. Hammocks on the beach. Come get water too. And it costs half the price to get there. And guess what? Their money dead low. Mm-hmm. So if you go there with $1,000, you live like a king. Yeah. For a week, by opening nobody in. I hope no tourists watching this now. Cause <laughs> Listen. They probably really know. Cuba. You could go on the beach in Cuba. I haven't been to Cuba. I have plenty of friends who, who went to Cuba. Cuba is really nice. I have plenty of friends who went to Cuba. They went to Cuba, went on the beach. They spent $20. You sit on the beach, right? I don't know what $20 could get you in the on the beach. Yeah. Probably with two sky juices I've made. Maybe. Kong Salad then with $10, $15. Right. <laughs> in Cuba, they bring you a platter with this big, no joke. I don't know what kind of fish this is. The fish hanging off the plate. <laughs> These fellas live streaming me. They say, boy, look what they're giving me inside Cuba for $20. <laughs> the fish hanging off the plate with all kinds of herbs and spices and things running on a bed of rice and a coconut leaf just to catch the plate underneath. Mm-hmm. I said, but it looks sexy, eh? <laughs> and you get one, one big margarita drink on the top of a mojito or something in this big glass like this. Five Ma- <laughs> Bro, less than $20. And guess what? Hold on, all that for less than $20. Mm-hmm. You ain't have to go nowhere to get it. How much is this good Cuba again? They bring that they bring that to you to your your, your beach chair on the beach and they serve you right there and come back and get your empty plate and get it back. Fifteen percent gratu? What grats? No, gratuity is not automatic. The only asses do that. And VAT. No. Mm-hmm. We don't do that. They don't do that. You spend that twenty or twenty dollars means twenty dollars. And you eat to your heart's content and the service is through the roof. So I say, man, listen man. We gotta start giving these people something valuable for their money. So on one blog I saw where somebody mentioned um, the amazing swimming pigs of the Bahamas. Now, everybody knows about swimming pigs now. Everybody here know about that right now, now right? Yeah. Would you believe two years ago, 90% of the population didn't know about that? Mm-hmm. 90%. Say, swimming pigs, like, what that is? I knew because I went online and I did research. It ain't nobody else's fault that they didn't know yeah. because it wasn't promoted by the government or the Ministry of Tourism. The Ministry of Tourism jumped on that, the ending part of last year. But at that time, I already had a company up and running. Now, yeah. That's enough of the pigs. That's what brought right. attention to it. Yeah, now right. the Ministry of Tourism has adopted those pigs. Now they make sure that the pigs get water on time. Mm-hmm. People are feeding them. 
tourists ain't down there doing crazy stuff, giving them beer and alcoholic beverages and riding them and doing all kind of stupidness. People even stole pigs, pigs and put them on different <laughs> islands. The pigs are not only in, in, in big major key anymore. You got pigs in the Spanish Wells, you got pigs in Abaco, mm -hmm. you got pigs on Grand Isle, they're down in Grand, near Grand Isle's resort on another key down there, farmers, key, they're all over the place now. They're spreading them out. Um, when I started going down there, I, <laughs> I researched it, I didn't know where it was. I didn't know anything about boating or the sea. I always loved boats. I had friends who had boats. I didn't know anything about boating or the sea. And I called a friend of mine. They say, hey, man, listen, you know anything about these swimming pigs? He said, yeah, I hear about them, but I know about the exoma keys. I got friends down there. I say, if I tell you right now, the pigs are on a big major key. Do you know where that is? He said, yeah, that's right by Staniel Key. I say, OK. I say, all right. What if I tell you I have some people who want to go down there. I'm going to pay to fuel your boat, and then I'm going to pay you to take me down there. He said, all right. He said, well, that's a long run. That's 80 miles from here. I said, okay. He said, well, how much you can charge me? He said, boy, between the fuel to get down there and come back and my pay, what I'm going to be about 2,500, but three grand. I said, okay. He said, okay. He said, when you want to go? I said, in the morning. I already had the people lined up, and I already did my research, and I know what the market rate was to get from Nassau to there. People were doing it from here privately, but there didn't exist a group tour. You have a lot of people that want to do it, but they can't spend that big money. Mm. But I can get to that. So what we did was we took those people the next day, we took those persons on the boat. What they didn't know, those tourists, that was a trial run, but they paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> we went down there. Now let me tell you what happened. We got caught in the storm. This fellow ain't checked the weather, and we got lost at sea. Mm. He know how to get there, though. Five hours. Who? He know how to get the big major key, though. Get where? <laughs> Get where? You know what I mean? He was lost. We <laughs> stopped to six islands. You know how much keys in the Exoma Keys? Over 300. We stopped to six different islands. I had to hop off the boat, get wet, talk to fellas on the beach, some Haitian guys. And I keep asking them, you know where the swimming pigs is? Boy, you got far to go. Go far. <laughs> where down? I said, how far, man? You know they ain't telling you no kilometers or no miles or nothing. Yeah. And they ain't no coordinates to tell you put in the GPS system. Keep going, keep going. So we keep going. And every island we stop too. Far, far, go. <laughs> that time the tourists on the boat, boy, they mad. Because they hear us asking yeah. for directions. They say, all right, you're lost, eh? <laughs> I look at, yap, yap, we lost. <laughs> no, man. I know where I can, you know. I just check it something. I say, all right, then. But I say, these people know we lost, bro. So after about four hours, which it should not take to get to any destination with people on your boat. Um, we get to the beach. I see the pigs. I say, thank you, Jesus. Please, let these people have a good time. <laughs> Put them on the beach. They've been in the water for 30 minutes. Cap say, hey, bro, listen. You know it could be for three hours getting back, bro. We got to leave soon. I say, we just get here. Nigga say, but listen. You ain't one of these people on this boat in the night. Anything could happen. And in the night, you can't see nothing on the sea. <laughs> I said, boy, we just take four hours to get these people here. I said, why can't I tell them that? I said, well, you have to tell them that. I said, what is that? So coming, I had to go explain to these people. You know, I get around. So coming back, big storm. I'm talking about the sky, black. Thunder, lightning, and I'm talking about big sea. Big, I'm talking about the, the, the boat pointing in the air at the, at the sun, like this. And then the, the wave come under the boat, and the boat just goes straight down like this. Wow, straight in the water. <laughs> These people, on, two of the ladies on the boat start crying, boys out crying, oh, face snotty. <laughs> I say, oh, Jesus, this is a, this a disaster. This is, this is you. This is, this is the enemy right here. <laughs> Get back in Nassau, drenched with rain. They shivering. They face red. I, I couldn't even say nothing. I couldn't even say nothing. Get off the boat. I had a driver that we to take them up to the hotel. Drop them off to the hotel, wait, listen, in 20 minutes, they from Atlantis. In 20 minutes, Atlantis had me on the phone. On the phone. I ain't talking about no little Debbie Debbie friend that's age. I talking about the director of operations. Mm -hmm. This Mr. McKinney. <laughs> so you get one company to take people down to Exoma? Um, yeah. But we got some people here, and they're very angry. Mm -hmm. And they say they want all their money back now. Wow. They want the money then in the book. And then buy fuel with the money. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't give your boy money in the hand. I call him. Spelling an answer for two hours. I say, boy, wherever you is, you need to answer this phone now. I said, we got to go to Atlantis. He ain't never answered that night. So I had to go to Atlantis myself. Going on quick change, my bed clothes, going back to Atlantis. I sitting up in the boardroom. The hotel manager come down. He said, listen to me. Whatever money you take from them people, 
I don't want that bag by morning. He said, them people say, you take six hours to get them to the pigs. You know, they are on two. And they is only there for 12 minutes. I said, 12? I said, 12? I said, bro, if they say 45, I can understand that, but 12? He said, they said, they're coming back, they almost died. I said, oh, Jesus, Lord. So, light bulb going off again. Bing! I said, you know something? I had my GoPro. I say, I can prove right now, it didn't take them those six hours to get down there. So on the GoPro, I snap pictures all along the way. I snap pictures and really when they're getting on the boat, because I mean, this is my first, this is my first trip, this is my maiden trip, this is my maiden excited. voyage. I excited, I gotta get all this, because I gotta go make my brochure now and tell people that's what I do. Uh. First clip showed about 8.30, they're getting on the boat. The other few clips showed us on the journey down, we are passing one of the keys close to Pig Beach, and then around maybe 12 o'clock or so, it showed them in the water with the pigs. He said, all right, cool, all right. So from 8.30 to about 11.45, 12, 9, oh, six hours. He said, all right, so I could see they lie there. And then it had the first picture from like 11.55, 11.45 or something, and the final picture was actually about 1.20 or something. So they were there more than an hour. Mm. He said, all right, that's another lie. He said, all right, cool. He said, what about coming back though? <laughs> in my phone, I had my you're iPhone. Missing the point. You're missing the point. <laughs> Coming back, when the storm kick up, I turn up the music on the boat. I get a couple of drinks. Everybody on the boat singing. That time, I, I ain't thinking we can die. <laughs> <laughs> I get all this on a video. I get this on video. I show them that. He say, hold on now. These people saying they was about to die, but here they is on this boat singing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He say, boy, I need to do more investigation. You see, he investigate, he go on, and he investigate that for about two, three days. But I give me time to get that money together. And then I finally catch up with the captain the next morning. Mm -hmm. He bring the money back I give them. He's a reasonable fella. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of the money I had to go find him. Mm -hmm. That time I only had a little bit over a thousand in the bank to start this business. Mm -hmm. So I had to go grab that and go back over there. At the end of the day, Atlantis is looking for the clients, but he didn't want with you. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you're doing. Far as I know, I remember you used to wake you up. I know you're in a boat, yeah. Don't you dare take it, people out. <laughs> Bring this money, boy. <laughs> I gave them all my money. Mm. I broke again. Mm. Broke. Flat broke. And all I, and I said, I can't go back over the door, but I sell it no big door. To these people. And nothing nah. mm. So I gave them all the money. Cap was mad because he ain't had no money. The boat empty. He gave the people back boat empty because that's actually his cousin's boat. Mm. <laughs> he gave that back empty. Um, and he said, but what we can do next? But he said, but you must be going fishing. Because <laughs> he ain't going back down there. Yeah. He said, but I ain't going to run either. But if you're going to do fishing, we can go. But that run right there, I ain't going to wait. I put that down for about 10 months, 10, 11 months. Um, I got the opportunity to do it again. But the next time, I was smarter. Um, I had a yacht. I got some rich people to go from the Ocean Club. I got them $8,000. I say, even if they ask some money back, they can get about half. I can keep with two of this ground. That's saying that's not nothing. Mm -hmm. They spend the money. Mm -hmm. And after they, had, they went down and they had such a great time, they came back and they talk about it. So the calls start coming in. Right? The thing is, I was only able to do one tour like that maybe every two weeks, three weeks. That ain't enough to sustain the business. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the market, I look at the motor calls coming in and how many people I was denying because of the price. I see, hold on. I can only do three of these big time tour a month, but I turn in down 50 and 60 people every day. Mm -hmm. I say, all right, I see what I got to do now. Mm -hmm. I found a boat where we got to do ride sharing, like Uber. You can't afford $6,000 to get yourself down there. Mm -hmm. But you could afford three hundred fifty dollars. You could afford three fifty. You could afford three fifty. You could mm -hmm. afford three fifty. It's all right. I collect all my calls. I write them down on a list of my little Milo bottle of <laughs> and I write all them down on a list. All right, guys, we got a trip. All you all are gonna be here for the next four days. We're gonna take this trip day after tomorrow. Collect up all the money. There's no credit card machine or nothing like that. Big time now. Nah. Collect up all the money. Put the fuel in the boat or whatever. Shoot them down. Boom. For his trip, successful. But a real captain.
<laughs> we will get there in two hours and ten minutes. That's the right time from Nassau to Exuma. That's 85 miles. That's the proper time. And the thing is, he told me that's what it's going to be. I briefed them and told them that's what it's going to be. They said, we ain't care. We just won't get there. And the two hours and ten, I talking about this fella point this boat at Exuma and drive straight to this beach like that's where he live. <laughs> and put that boat up on the beach. And when he finished, he sat inside the chair and fold the arm. He said, all right. I can see you when you come back up, boy. I said, this is my guy, Richard. Mm -hmm. And from that day, a couple of years ago, me and him, and it was under a different name. It was actually started off as a Zoma escape. And we've been running since then. And, and, and when we started, we started off on a little boat. People used to see us ride out of the harbor, boat. That boat even as long as this classroom. You only got to carry eight people on the boat, including me and him. <laughs> and the people used to laugh, say, boy, you're going to Zoma on this dinghy? Say, dinghy, yeah. I'll stay right there. See, that's one thing you have to worry about entrepreneurship. People can laugh at you. They can make fun of you too when you first start up. But after a while, they can imitate you. Mm -hmm. Since we started this company, no joke, there's been seven companies that imitated our blueprint and do what we do now. We're the largest. Remember, we started off in that little boat, the boat was about 26 feet, mm -hmm. two little engines on the back, and we had five vessels, the fastest vessels in the, in the, in the, in the harbor. Performance, custom made boat with supercharged engines on the back, triples. Mm -hmm. And we have two planes. Oh. Right now. But that's my story, guys. That's where I came from. $30. $30. $30. Farmers <laughs> Limited. A limited liability corporation. $30. Yeah, but I board of directors and everything. Thank you so much, Dara. That was an amazing story. Business making cookies. All right. Um, you want me to just do your thing first? Or do you you want me to give us some cookies? You bring money? <laughs> you just tell me you got how much plate? How much boat? <laughs> Where the I know you got right? this bump. Hold up for that for free. Yeah. got all of. <laughs> but anyhow, um, well, I can do the show at the same time, Aisha. Hey, well, so ahead, I can start ahead. the show. Um, how many of you are familiar with entrepreneur, entrepreneur? Nobody, right? Nobody. Okay, we have a podcast that we do together. It's an entrepreneurship podcast where we, um, we touch on different topics. We encourage our entrepreneurs. We deal with issues that we go through on an everyday basis, especially from a startup level. And the things that you deal with constantly, we just discuss these issues every week, uh, Thursdays at 4.30 on Facebook Live. So you can search for the page One Entrepreneur, Two she Entrepreneur was, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. That's One Entrepreneur. And the uh, number two, Entrepreneur on Facebook. Every Thursday we do the show. And so we just, I, uh, Tisha invited me, so I just told her, you know, we might as well do the show from here this week. We normally do it on Thursday, but I said it would be a good idea to involve you guys in the actual show today. So this is, we're going to do the live show. We're on Facebook Live right now. We're recording the show for SoundCloud as well. So just to make you guys aware. And I hope you guys have a lot of questions because I don't like to talk about myself much. I don't have a long, elaborate story like Dario. I don't know. Dario, how old you is, but... Huh? How old you is, man? Cause you, you was you, cause you no sir, you know way. You was working the Atlantis when the Royal Towers first opened. Yeah. He walked to Atlantis when he was a fetus. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, cause all I think is say how old this boy is. Yet. He got to be. Got a couple more years. I know, but anyhow, yeah, I can. Let me see your passport. Anyway, leave that. <laughs> All right, so my name is Gregory Cawley II. Wait, uh, before you do go there. Go ahead. Before you do go there. Uh -huh. No. One thing I did bring, though. Remember I told you... Talking to Mike for the people for Facebook Live. Oh, for the people live. Yes. Remember I told you when I went on that first voyage, I didn't know nothing about boats? <laughs> Captain Na. Oh, okay. Who knows what is that? Captain's license. Bingo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what you in do, buddy? <laughs> I know, right? Show us story. You don't do everything. I rob and I you, have a team. You ain't been the way. No. <laughs> my goodness. Vietnam. But like I'm saying, my name is Gregory Cody, and I, I don't like to talk about myself, so I'll try to give a abbreviated, you know, version of my story. Why are you laughing, Gail? Sorry. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Go on. Sorry. Did we get uh, alive? <laughs> I'll give him an abbreviated story. Um, it's not as long. I'm not as old as Dario, but um, <laughs> I I actually started out in the maritime industry professionally. It was, I graduated high school, hated school, came out of high school, my mother knew someone that owned a boat, Tom Hanna, he owned uh, some of the freight boats on Potterski. So she just, you know, got me a job on the boat, and that's how I got involved in the maritime industry. Went from that boat to the Grand Master, which goes down to Exuma every week. I was there for three, about three and a half years, and then I went to uh, Bahamas Ferries for another seven years. 
And um, started out as a deckhand, which is the guy at the bottom of the rung. You lose the ropes, you deal with the customers on the ground level. Um, and I worked my way up to first officer. And um, I got fired. I won't go into the details as to why I got fired. It was a personal you know, situation because I won employee of the year, deckhand of the year, won a bunch of awards. But something went down, got fired. That was outside of the birth of my daughter, the best day of my life. I was happy when I got fired. Most people you know, when they get fired, what's their attitude? Somber, the world is over, depressed, they don't know where the money can come from. And guess what? I get fired when my girl was five months pregnant. Baby on the way, I get fired. Prior to that, I had already started making cookies just to eat, because I had sweet mouth. Who in here ain't sweet mouth? <laughs> Nobody, right? Every behemoth I know sweet mouth. So I used to start making cookies, make them from scratch, just used to take them to work, eat them while we watching football on Sundays, enjoy them. People used to tell me all the time, well, you need to sell these. But you know, when you have a job, what do I need to sell them for? I have money, I get in a steady paycheck. I don't need no money. When I get fired, <laughs> I was like, you know what? Not selling these cookies don't sound too bad. So the first thing I had to do, and, and, and when I got fired, I had no time to focus on what couldn't work. A lot of times people tend to focus on what ain't gonna work. They focus on the issues, the obstacles first. I just focus on, okay, what do I need to do? I need to set prices. I need to start a Facebook page. I need to start spamming people and tagging them in pictures to get them to like the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I, I just was figuring out what I had to do so that I could just get some orders because in the beginning, my only concern was making sure I could pay the bills. Making enough just so I could make money to pay the bills. And um, he started, what you say you started with, $30? $30. Oh, you yeah. beat me. I started with probably about $100 or something like that. Oh, you bought it. Yeah, well, not well, yeah, something like that. Yeah. But it was just a bag, you know, bag of sugar, bag of flour, basic stuff you need to make cookies. Bag of chocolate chips, simple stuff. So it was little money because I know teacher says the whole purpose of this class is you don't need a bunch of money to start a business because people always think, oh, I need capital, I need $40,000, $50,000. Everybody want to start big. But you got to start on the ground level. Start with what you could. Go ahead, Tisha. And every time, every time you have people, they'll say, well, hold on. Um, I'm waiting to make my capital. Yes. So you're waiting on the money to make the money. Yes. How long are you going to wait on the money to make the money? Yes. Exactly. And you see people, they'll, they'll stay on their job for years waiting on the money to make their money instead of saving the money to start making the money mm -hmm. or finding a way to, to be cheaper or focus on more of your needs. Yeah. You just basically start where you are. Where, when I started out, I had two cookies. Chocolate chip and oatmeal raisin. Started out with two. And um, got orders. Wasn't a lot, but it was enough to pay the bills and save a little something. So I just continued to work, work, focus. And then um, shortly after that, I was, I was offered a job to do like pr pruning trees, cutting down trees, la landscaping, like real dirty work. And um, I was there for maybe two months. And... The way we had it, because and, and at this time, the business was doing pretty well, pretty well. I was making money, doing well. But you know you have your family members. You know why you don't still want to get one little job so you can know, you can do all two at the same time, get one job. They can't grasp the concept of you fully working for yourself. So they're encouraging me. So I was like, you know what, yeah, let me get one next job. Let me, let me take this job. Let me, you know, supplement my income or whatever, make some extra money or whatever. And the good thing what happened was, we came into uh, like a week where it was just rainy. And whenever it rained, we couldn't do any work. So I couldn't go into work when it rained. So I was like, this, this really don't make no sense. Why don't I just continue to take my, all my time, my full time, and do my business? Because there would be times when we going out on the truck, driving out Lifewood Key to go you know, cut trees and stuff. And people, hey, I could get an order, and I can't do anything because I out on the truck working. So I was like, you know, let me just go right in, full in. And ever since then, it has continued to grow every single year and that same business that started with just about a hundred dollars now generates about a hundred thousand dollars a year and it's not easy because it's essentially me doing the work my uh fiance helps out where she can you know when it comes to uh, um, answering people for me helping out because it's a lot of orders every day now but i just stuck with it i don't take a lot of breaks i was work i just started taking sundays off for it's been five years up until the beginning of this year i was working every single day 16 to 18 hours a day no days off no days you see this fellow look like you like what oh, jesus i might as well keep my job i can't do that but this is this is the kind of dedication it takes because but the thing is you know what the difference is 
You hate working eight hours for other people, but you love working 12 to 16 hours for yourself. Correct. Because it's for you. You know what I mean? You building your dream. You're doing it for you. When you're doing it for other people, it's a drag. You can't wait to knock off. How much are you all here watching the clock when you're on your job? You all watching from before you all reach? You understand? You can't wait to go home. But that's because you're working for somebody else. So, so it may sound bad hearing 16 hours a day working for yourself, but when it's for you, it's a different feeling. You know what I mean? And a lot of people don't grasp that. And a lot of people, and like he said, not everyone is made to be an entrepreneur. And it's not a bad thing. Because if everyone is an entrepreneur, then no one would be an entrepreneur because you don't want people to work for you. Right. You understand? You need people to work, and you need good workers. So it's okay if you're not an entrepreneur. But there's a lot of people that say they want to do it, but they ain't serious. They ain't serious. When, um, how much people in here want a million dollars? How much? Now, if I start to list off what you got to do to make that, slowly some people are going to start, hold on, wait, I got to miss love and hip-hop. I can't <laughs> watch Game of Thrones. I can't play my 2K. What? A lot of people don't prioritize things. You're, a lot of people focus on, they, want, they just want to be entertained. You understand? And what I'm learning as I get older, time is the most valuable asset you have. And this is what I tell people all the time. Life is fair, you know. Each of us are given the same amount of time. Now, some people got a head start. Some people have rich parents. Some people got, uh, grew up in a better family. Some people grew up poor. You start off different, but you have the same amount of time. All that means is you have to put in more work, and you have to utilize your time better than that person that started off uh, um, with a better start than you did. And a lot of people ain't willing to do that. A lot of people sit down, man, his daddy worked, his daddy owned this company. That's how you get these contracts. They just want to sit back and complain. But the thing is, and as you see that this shirt says, losers make excuses, winners make adjustments. And a lot of losers will sit around and make excuses all day. And if you got some of them friends, I can tell you now, nah, you better get rid of them. If you're serious. If you seriously want to go into entrepreneurship and be successful, you can't keep a bunch of people with loser mentalities around you because they could drag you down. Straight up. And in this country, we have a bunch of them. Hmm. All over the place. And they're normally the closest people to you. My mother never did believe in anything I was doing outside of just having a job. She told me when I was in, because I was in the music industry as well. I was a producer for a, a lot of years, traveling across the U.S. While I was doing that, my own mom tell me, boy, what you doing here, realistic? I wasted my time, she basically tell me. You got to be willing to cut your mouth off. Not like, I don't want to talk to you in life, but reduce the amount of time you spend around them and discussing certain things. You can still go to the dinners and eat up all the food and the macaroni and all them things. Sure, you all could be cool, but you have to kind of balance the time and the effort and the information that you share. You understand? And a lot of people can't do that. They can't bring themselves to do that. But uh, unfortunately, you won't be able to persevere and make it if you can't do these things. These are things that are required. And that's why being an entrepreneur is a lot of sacrifices. A lot of parties miss, a lot of Netflix miss, all kind of stuff you're going to have to cut off. But that's only if you're serious. And so I say that to say that, you know, that it's, it's just if you're serious about it, you've got to really dive in. Don't allow people to bring you down and stop making excuses. I get, when I hear people make excuses, I get turned off. Like, and, I, and if I keep, keep providing you solutions and you find new excuses, it's like, uh, why, why are we talking? Because you ain't serious. People are trying problems Yes. They, they're so creative with it. Listen, every, every solution you have, they have a problem. Yeah. Hold on, I ain't getting any of your students. I ain't getting your homework. But it's, it's, uh, people tend to find excuses straight through. And if you find, you, you find yourself around these people, you need to find yourself around some new people. Me, I tell people all the time, I don't got no bunch of friends. And I'm okay with that. I have a lot of acquaint acquaintances, a lot of people I associate with. But I don't have a lot of, I don't have a, I keep my circle very small because your circle is very important. The people that are closest to you and around you are going to determine your trajectory, where you're going to end up. Because let's face it, we all human beings, we're influenced by other people. You know what I mean? You are, it's just human nature, ain't nothing wrong with it. But recognizing that you have to make the necessary decisions so that you could be successful. And um, basically that's it. I mean, you wanted me to get into something else? I don't know. With my story, that's, that's basically it. I don't have a long story. I sorry, I don't have a long story like Dario. <laughs> I ain't do every occupation in the Bahamas. 
I had about two, two, three jobs. Day. I try. A, listen. Every day. Listen. If any, if any of y'all tell me I would been making cookies six years ago, I was getting a free case of vitamin from Sunderland's because I was getting y'all straight up there. Because <laughs> there's no way I would have pictured myself baking cookies for a living. Like I told you, I, I've been in maritime industry. That was never going to be a career. My real passion at that time was music. I was in music production. And that's what I figured I was going to be doing my entire life. But sometimes life doesn't always work out that way. And like I said, you've got to be able to make the necessary adjustments. And you've got to accept certain things. Some people are stubborn. They don't know when to give up. They don't know when to switch paths. Sometimes you just have to accept that this may not have been the path for you. And you make the necessary adjustments. So that's what I'm about. Just not making excuses and making adjustments. That's my story. That was Greg Colley from the Cookie Caterer. Um, now we have Gail coming up, which is really interesting is, remember when we learned how to find a job at the beginning of class? Gail just created an amazing blog all about being employed. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs being employed. The way we think, the way we feel while we're employed and the things that people say to us mm -hmm. that we have to put up with while we're employed. How do we access that blog, Gail? Um, it's hwbe.info hwbe.info um, it stands for hard worker bad employee so that was the inspiration oh, for that. that it was originally the job whisperer but unfortunately that seems to have already been taken and that's what happens when you sit on an idea for two three years um, you usually find that somebody else has it or comes up with it it's mm -hmm. not exclusive to you and if you don't act on it it will um, it will you could lose out on it so uh, yeah, hwbe.info. The, the person who took it, that's not the name of the book. I'm not sure if it's a book. It's a website for sure. Yeah, he has an extensive blog. Um, but thankfully, he's not doing... I know, right? <laughs> thankfully, he's not. He, it wasn't the angle that I was doing it. I uh, wanted to come from, so it worked out okay. And I can throw my plug in right there, too. Cookie Cater app, you all can download it. We have an app now, so wow. when you order your cookies, uh, iOS app, store, the Apple store. Why you got your app? arm full where your phone is? Download the app, you mess. No <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> Cookie Cater app, Android and the uh, Apple store. And also, um, we, uh, it's a network. This podcast falls under a network. Uh, it's at the Under the Rug Media Group. And all of the shows are on there, as well as the other shows that we have. And that's GoUnderTheRug.com, so you can go there as well to catch up on all the shows. And like I said, on Facebook, we're on Facebook Live as well, so check those things out. So, again, okay, go ahead. Okay, so on the topic of starting, you don't need, a, what, $100 to start a business. Mm -hmm. um, I have three points for you all. Uh, the first one is that if you're not currently an entrepreneur, you're a entrepreneur as we call it, you want to be an entrepreneur, you can use your job for networking. And networking is essential in entrepreneurship. Basically, especially here in the Bahamas, as you all know, I'm sure, it's who you know rather than what you know. And the two entrepreneurs that have spoken thus far have indicated their connections or their network that they used to their advantage when they started their business. Um, I have been on more than 10 jobs um, and I that has enabled me to be connected to various kinds of people and a lot of people look at that negatively Greg and Travis get on me on for that all the time but um, not as much as Greg yeah <laughs> Greg especially <laughs> and that's that was the inspiration for the blog too because I wanted to I wanted to show that you could turn something that may seem to be negative into a positive being on a job every day is not easy especially if you want to own your own business or that's your end goal. So if you are on a job currently, you have access to customers, you have access to all kinds of people. There are various kinds of people walking through the door every day and you never know who would be able to assist you to get to where you need to go. Um, focus on networking events if you want. Um, wherever you are, just try to speak to somebody new. Try to talk to somebody that you may feel would be an asset to you and what it is that you want to do. And put yourself in contact with people in the industry that you would like to be in. And don't be obvious or thirsty with it. Don't be like, oh, hey, I'm so and so and I want to start a business and such and such. And I hear you're the person to talk to. Great. And then you get that kind of response like, what the hell is she talking about? But you want to build, network with people with a goal to build relationships with them. That means 
maybe send in an email after you meet them. Hi, I'm so and so. I met you at such and such, and such event. Um, let me know if you're speaking somewhere else again. Or hi, I'm so and so. I'm planning on going here. Do you think you'll be coming to this event? Maybe we can speak again. Something to that effect where um, the connection will be of value to you later on. And don't be afraid to sow seeds now because you never know when you'll reap the benefits of what you're doing now. If you're speaking or you may speak to somebody, I had an interview um, probably in 2012. I was denied for the job. The person called me back in 2015 and she found me on LinkedIn. But she remembered me from that interview from three years before. I didn't know I was sowing a seed for a job in three years when I was busted, broken, like, wow, where my next job would be or what am I going to do? Am I going to do this entrepreneurship thing? Can I get another job? I didn't know I was sowing seeds for that. So don't be afraid to network. Don't be afraid to connect with people. The second thing is bartering. And um, when you start a business out especially, you're going to do a lot of bartering. Unfortunately, I know you may think that, you know, I'm going to be making this money right away. But try to barter what it is that you're offering with somebody that can offer something to you as well. For example, with uh, Kentisha and PopStop, she's now selling popsicles. Now, let's say me wanting to start out in my business, um, I want to do a delivery company. I could approach Kentisha and say, you know what, I'd like to start this thing. I don't have enough money to do X, Y, Z, but if you... Give me 50 popsicles, I'll give you X amount from the profits of that. Or if you give me 50 popsicles, I can deliver your stock for today. Whatever the case may be, you can use bartering to your advantage when you're first starting out. And people, you'd be surprised who'd be willing to assist you. As many people are willing to shoot you down and talk bad about you and stuff like that, there are people out here who are willing to assist you on this journey. So don't be afraid to barter. And um, my third point is basically the internet. And due to the internet, you could start yes, a business uh, yes. with absolutely nothing yes. at all. Um, you don't need a fancy, Facebook is absolutely free. You don't need a fancy, uh, as Dario mentioned, an office or hiring people, or as Greg said, he just started out of his kitchen baking. Online is your playground at this point. It really is where all business is taking place. So if you're not online, you aren't serious about this thing either. Validate yourself, validate your business by being online. You can create a Facebook page. That takes nothing. Katisha says she did a $20 uh, a boost, an ad boost for pop stuff. You don't know where, you don't know whose eyeballs some, some people those are going to some reach. Some of them probably got multiple Facebook pages. Not a stock there, I suppose. What? <laughs> <laughs> So they know it here. Don't take long to create no bitch. <laughs> yeah, create, <laughs> <laughs> create, a bit, create a business page. Um, if you can purchase a domain, domains are like $1.99 on GoDaddy. If you could find for eight quarters, you could buy, purchase a domain. Purchase a domain for yourself. The first thing when you hear about a business, what do you do? Search for them online. Yeah. Search for them on Facebook. It validates them. For some reason, we believe that if they don't have a website, they're not serious about it. They don't have a Facebook page, they're not serious about it. So if you are serious about your business, start a Facebook page today. And I started a Facebook page for one of my businesses, did not use it for two years. I'm able to use it now. You know what happens? People go to that now. Oh, she be in a business, she be, she be doing this from 2012. Nope. But it validates you just a little bit more than the persons that you're trying to compete with. So use the internet to your advantage if you can't do a website, they have templates. They have Wix, W-I-X dot com. Yeah, I like that one. Travis likes, <laughs> <laughs> Travis likes <laughs> WordPress, W-O-R-D-P-R-E-S-S, -S, if you're unfamiliar with it. There are templates there that you can create your own website. You don't have to pay people. Sorry, Travis. <laughs> you don't have to pay people to build your site. You can do it yourself. Travis builds websites for a living. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Um, absolutely Sorry, agree. Travis. You definitely need to have an online presence when uh, nowadays when you're talking about opening your own business because everybody's online. Like every, everybody, everybody, mommy in here get a cell phone, right? And you on WhatsApp. Unfortunately, Who yeah. mommy on Facebook? Mine too. Who are they, mommy? <laughs> we don't do that by the leader. <laughs> but seriously, everybody is online. Everybody has access to that information. And the good thing is it's free. Like Antisha said, she did her first boost for $20. I can tell you right now, $20 gets you thousands. I think people in 
of hits. You get tired of people. Your inbox will be on fire for $20. Mm-hmm. I know you're spending more than that. You're buying a live data like crazy. Spend it. Yeah. That's a couple dollars, man. Ten, five dollars, you can get it done. And websites? Yes. Believe it on. Well, I built my own. I built my own website. I didn't know anything about building websites either. I did a course on Udemy for ten dollars. I'm a different kind of animal, man. I did a course on Udemy yeah, for ten dollars, <laughs> and it took me a month. And I built my own website. It took me about two months to build it the way I want it. So I accept international credit cards and everything online. Yeah, that's about it. Um, use the internet to your advantage, and you can boost a post for a dollar. It doesn't, it's not a large amount of money needed. Just get started. Just start to validate your business, have an online presence, and get started as soon as possible. And then, of course, they call it networking, but connect with other people, especially people in here. You know, Bahamians, when we come in class, we sit down, we keep it to ourselves, head down, because you don't know who's around or you don't know what's going on. But try to reach out to other people that you come in contact with and you never know. You never, never know how they can further affect your life. Yeah, and that's and that's an important point because when I used when I used to when I was in the music industry and we go to seminars, and you know we would focus on these big Grammy award winning producers that are on the panel, and you would ignore the people sitting right next to you, and I noticed a lot of the people that were sitting right next to me go on to work for people like Britney Spears, all the biggest artists in the same room sitting right next to you, so you never know. You should network. All y'all should be networking because you don't know how you you, you all could benefit from each other. You know what I mean? You may need a designer. He may be a designer. He may need what you you uh, uh, you you do. So it's you just got to network with the people in here because you never know where someone is going to be in the next two, three, four, five years. So just that's an important point. Uh, my final point is also to make yourself that expert in your field, whatever you decide to do. Study. You don't have to. Uh, get fancy degrees per, per se or certifications as mentioned by the panel here let people be the ones to come to you about what it is that you want to do um, anybody have a business that they're thinking about starting in here can nobody Phil God why, why what, yeah. may I ask what <laughs> may I ask what industry not exactly what it is but what industry you believe okay so food and beverage let's say restaurant business food and beverage and uh, right now, as you plan to do that, you should be seeking out people that would be considered experts in that field. So when they come to you, they will already assume that you know exactly what it is that you're doing and what it is that you're talking about. So it's easy to find people. Let's say you go into a restaurant, you speak with a manager. People like to get their heads swell up. Hey, you know, I like what you're doing in here. I like what's going on. Why don't you tell me about this? Inadvertently, they're giving you the tools you need so that later on you know exactly what it is that you need to do. Or working in a restaurant, you making notes of certain things. You're online researching what it is that you want to do. And you position yourself as the expert in the field so when you start to open this thing, you know exactly what's going on. When I first started marketing, I had close friends online that's talking about what the hell does she think she's doing? She don't know nothing about that. She don't know nothing about this. They don't know what I decided to do, who I decided to interact with, and the personal studies that I decided to take in order to make my opposition myself to be able to assist other people. But they only saw what they perceived me to be. And that's all well and good. But then at the end of the day, what you start calling yourself is what people start calling you. I started calling myself Gail the Marketer, or Eyes Do Marketing. That's what I say, right? I like that one. All right, my name is Gail, and I do marketing. That's on my website. That's on everything. And you know what? I stuck with it long enough. People's like, oh, you know, if you need marketing, you better talk to Gail. Start calling yourself exactly what it is that you'd like to do from now, and you, you can really see how that can assist you in making progress as well when it comes to doing exactly what you want to do. That's it. Thank you so much, Gail. Um, we have a few minutes left. Travis, now is your time to shine. <laughs> I'll probably tell a story. I'll tell the, I have mic right now. I'll tell the story in reverse, but I'll I'll start with like the homework, I guess. Uh, I guess so. Uh, uh, but I'll start with a question. So I know Gail kind of asked this question. Who who has an idea of a business? Who, who, who's had an idea of a business that they want to start? Raise your hand. 
Like just an idea. I'm sure Raise everyone in here at least an had idea, an idea. Something that you think that may be cool. At least. Right? No, no, keep it keep it raised. Keep it raised. Uh, next question would be how much how much hours did you spend on that thinking about that today? Like how much time do you dedicate on that all day? All day? All day? Mm-hmm. That man dedicated. Just throw random that. hours. Like how all day? You thought about it all day. Every waking moment. That's a sign. A couple hours. Okay. That's a sign. Huh? <laughs> okay. Um, and I saw some hands over here with like probably like a few hours, one or two hours over here. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, does everybody have a piece of paper on them right now that they can get access to? All right, take a piece of paper. Take a piece of paper. Do we something. need a pen as well? Yes, and something to write with. Preferably pencil, but if you have a paper, you, uh, I mean a pen, that'll work as well. Yeah, but just take out a piece of paper. All right, and I want you to, I want you to get very acquainted with that piece of paper. <laughs> How acquainted are we getting? Very acquainted, <laughs> almost, almost to the point of obsession, because, <laughs> because you should use this beautiful tool that is pretty much free every day that you are obsessed about an idea that you have, or if you want something to happen. There's main, mainly reasons for all this. I mean, if you're in, if you're in the habit of writing notes and stuff like that that's that's good too and keep that habit up but if you're not get, build this habit into yourself like between what goes on in your head and you putting it down on a piece of paper is the the first the first 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 moment you begin to crystallize that into reality and i say that don't take that lightly because when something's in your head it, you have that idea you thought god bless if you think about it the whole day but stuff happens you get a notification on facebook or you know you got to go to this thing and then it disappears and then you lose that moment and you lose that opportunity to crystallize that a little bit more so if if you the first beginning points of taking something from an idea to make money you have to get into the habit of always thinking about it and always writing it down two things that you need you need paper and a, a paper and a pen that's one thing um, and then ask yourself questions. Questions generate more and more ideas. Questions are kind of like that fertilizer kind of thing to make it grow. You got to be obsessed to ask yourself questions. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of tools that you could use, some very sophisticated in terms of how you ask yourself questions, but there's basic things that you do. First, two things that you need to do is one, if you haven't done this already, think about the things that you are good at and the problems that you've solved before. Just think of all the things. Think, think of things that you have an expertise in, a skill in, things that you say, oh, I'm pretty good at that. The next thing you're gonna do is try to marry that with something you feel passionate about or something that you, you're interested in, more than likely that idea that you've been having. And over time, as you keep writing those things, you start to make patterns and see how those things connect. You do that often enough, what you find is that, oh, like, like this thing that I've done, I could also do this and this. And I'm pretty good at that. Okay, now you're on to something. Now the next thing I want you to do, and this is going to sound crazy and, you know, what? stupid. Um, but that idea that you have, think of, write down all the things you th- of reasons why you think it would fail. Just write it down. Like all, the, if you think, if, like why you think it's dumb, why you think it's stupid, like, Oh, my, my mom might laugh at me if I do this, or if I do, I do this, I feel like someone would take this idea. Write all those things down. Write, write them down as much as possible. And like, if you run out of the ideas, keep thinking about it, and then write down something else stupid. It'll just come. Like, so when you, when you do that, the next thing you do now is you try to, is those things are like your fears, the things that you're scared, you're anxious about, excuses for most parts. Start defining those things, and now what I want you to do is create ways where that thing that you're scared of can't happen. Like write down the bulletproof that that fear. What could you do to ensure that that can't happen? Now what you're finding with that is now you're starting to build action items and steps to ensure that can't happen, that you're bulletproof it. And now you're saying, oh, you know, the things that I was scared of before really wasn't that big of a deal. When it's, uh, the, the beautiful thing about thoughts and the scary thing about thoughts 
is your brain gets you in a crazy loop and you keep magnifying something that isn't that scary. But once you solidify it and put it out there and you say, oh, this wasn't as bad and you start really defining it, it becomes less scary. And again, you could do all this on paper. That's crazy, like basically for free. Um, so again, when you do this, you start to see more patterns. If you like, okay, I, that thing I was scared of, I don't, that won't happen if I do this. Oh, and I've solved this problem this way. Now you start marrying things together and be like, oh, I could solve this problem and this thing isn't such a big deal. And what you do over time, you probably might get cramps writing so much. I, I would suggest getting a, a book over time versus getting a piece of paper. If you want to buy a ream of printer paper, do that as well. I have like 10 reams just uh, already. Yeah, something wrong with you. <laughs> um, but what you start to do is now you start to tell a story. And that story, if you put that in the right order, is your sales pitch, depending on what that idea is. So you're not going to get it right the first couple of times. You're going to try to tell people about your idea, and they, they'll be like, oh, I don't get it. Uh, but then the next beautiful thing about that is, is that they might ask you a question that you didn't think about. They'll be like, oh, I didn't think about that that way in that particular form. So now you go back to the to a piece of paper or if you're lucky enough to have a drawing board the drawing board as well you start to refine that idea a little bit again and then more patterns start to come and then you realize oh you you missed something completely you didn't even think of three weeks ago oh and if i do that then that thing i was afraid of two weeks ago really wouldn't matter and then you start getting in a habit just on a piece of paper a thing starting to connect and then it gets less scary and when things are less scary you begin to make more actions out of those things that you say, you know what, I could do that. And over time, if you're lucky enough and you have the courage to say, you know what, it's right enough for me to do it, you start to make a lot of those things that were just thoughts a reality. And then it gets really scary from there <laughs> because there's a little bit of excitement that happens as well because the thing that you thought was just a thought is now actually happening. You got to do it. And now it puts you in a position where, okay, I wanted this. I've been dreaming about this for a while. Now I got to actually take it. Because if you don't take it, someone, someone could take it. That opportunity. Especially if someone really watching and seeing what you're doing. That person who may have, if it was one of your fears that they were laughing at you or think you did not know what you're doing, they might say, oh, that's a really good idea. But that's why you got to get to it first. So when you do that over time, and then you realize your story starts to get better. They say, okay, I get it. And then the person that I'm talking to with this idea, they want to buy this idea. Like they want to buy if it's a product or a service because you're, you solve the problem, you have the skills with that, and you, you feel pretty confident with what you're selling. You seem like you know what you're doing. Even in the back of your head, you may not know what you're doing, but you figured it out in the first place because you conquered everything up to this point, and then you might have a first client. It might go you know, sloppy. You might go on a boat and you don't realize what's going on. But then, <laughs> but then you realize at a point you invested so much and it's not just necessarily money but time and you could have swore you were on to something. And then you keep asking yourself more questions. And you write those questions down on a piece of paper or that book by this time that you have that book. And then you get better at selling that story again, knowing the mistakes that you have and you know you'll never do that again. And then you sell it to someone else now for more value. Boom, you learn some other things along the way, like, oh, I could reduce costs. More margin for you to make more money. And all this started with a piece of paper and asking yourself questions. So just get in the habit of doing that. The simplest thing you could do, and you could do this laying on a couch. <laughs> Real talk, you do this laying on the couch. Why are you, um, watching, Game of why are you watching Game of Thrones? <laughs> you might get an idea from Game of Thrones. Don't binge now because you got to give that time to, to that idea. But the easiest thing you could do is pen and questions. So, in a nutshell, that's kind of what shift the cu culture has become. It's become uh, a place where not only do we think these ideas through like this, shift the culture. Um, we, we discuss these ideas with other people because outside of doing it on paper, we say, hey, what do you think of this idea? And you might get something from that other person, and that's how you build a community. And over time, more dots start to connect, and with that community networking and talking to other people, they may... Um, help in a way that you may not have been able to do in your own capacity or know somebody that could help. 
and then more of your ideas start becoming a reality. And then it gets really scary because now you're on this beautiful ride. And it's like, <laughs> yo, I was in here two years ago. It's kind of a little bit addicting. But then at the same token, it's like, you know, you got to keep pushing to see what else happens. And, and who knows? You may not have a lot of money the first time doing it. It may not make sense. You got to refine that pitch. But after you get over time, you start to get way more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Way more comfortable. And now you're on to something. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause for the Zen Master. Okay, Phil hold on one second, guys. We're getting ready to go right now, okay? We're just going to let them close up. If you have any questions, you could wait behind and ask all the questions you want, okay? Yeah, I know the rest of your class Fine. members are dying to break out. One second. <laughs> guys, I just want you to remember just one little thing. Um, like what he said um, just now. Um, you might not be where you want to be when you first start, but after putting the time and the work in, you're going to get where you need to be. And in the beginning, people are going to laugh at you. Um, I, read, I read a quote one time from somebody that stuck with me about two years after I started working for myself. If you're not embarrassed of your first form of your product, you launch too late. That's real. If you're not embarrassed of, your, of the first form of your product when you first started, you launch too late. You got to start now. Mm -hmm. You can't wait until everything is perfect. You got the money, you get the perfect facilities. No. It'll never be perfect. Start now. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't start now, you're never going to grow to what the full yeah, potential exactly. is. Yeah. All right, I just wanted to stick that in there. Yeah. Questions? Anybody can want to do questions, yeah. but. Yeah. Anybody, anybody got any have questions? Any questions? Don't be scared, man. Jeez. You have loads None? of information in here, especially, look here, she especially if you want to start your own business. This one say, look here, boy, love and hip-hop coming on, girl. I got to go. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, pardon. What's the name? She can hang around. She got to run. <laughs> this could be the fun part now. Yes. How did you launch your business idea to, let's say, the hotels or the food shipping industry? He wants to know how did you? Yeah, go ahead. He didn't want to speak on the mic. Go ahead. How did you launch your your Someone business you, eh? to the <laughs> to the cool ship so industry scared. and to the ho to the hotel industry? Who looking for you all? Well, I I didn't I didn't initially I didn't initially launch um, with the cruise ships. Uh, the hotels was my first source of uh, business marketing. Um, was that due know, to was your that, network? Say that again? Was that due to your network or your past experience with them? My past experience with the hotel that I worked at, mm -hmm. my face was already familiar. I can tell you this, because they were so familiar with my face, I knew that I worked in the hotel prior to what I was doing then, they didn't take me seriously. Yep. Okay. So my network didn't work. Okay. My network was wor worth nothing at the hotel that I used to work at. Mm. I went to the other hotels outside of that. I went to the Malia, I went to Sandals, I went to Breezes, I went to hotels where they did not know me. So I came to them as a stranger, but I had my flyers in hand and I had a full presentation. You know I got that? You know you're tired of hearing this. I walk. <laughs> the very first night before I got that very first tour, you know where I got those people from? The fish fry. I got a ride to the fish fry and I stand up with there with flyers. You know the guys who bother you all night at the fish fry with them flyers? I hate you. I was one of those guys. You know they trying to promote concerts? Yeah. I trying to promote my career. Put it on people windshield and thing. I didn't put any on the windshield, but what I did I gave to all the taxi drivers. I, res I respect that's the first, that's I the appreciate that. That's the first point of contact. Mm -hmm. Taxi drivers that's are they there the ambassadors, man. They, the first, when the person walk at the airport, that's who they see. Mm -hmm. I need a taxi. You get my flyers in your taxi, you hand that back, and I know people are asking for it. Taxi driver's like, man, finally, somebody doing this from Nassau? It's like, yep, that's me, call me tomorrow. You call me, you get these people on the boat, you get your commission. They're like, what? That's, and that's what it took. So after a while, all of those hotels started to call, call, call. I'm talking about the phone nonstop ringing. And then that pushed me into getting, uh, I wanted to get closer to the actual tourists. I didn't want them to wait to come here to actually purchase the product. I wanted to sell to them before they even got here and pre-purchase their packages. That's what we grew to. And that's when I had to go online and create my website, do my Facebook advertising or whatever. And now we, we actually advertise in about 12 different countries. Wow. Yeah, so the majority of our calls and the majority of our sales now come from places that people don't even know these people come to the Bahamas. Mm. Vietnam. All right, uh, 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 Cambodia. I can tell you right now. Um, let me show you something. I can let this guy right here help me for, for a second, real quick. 
a volunteer from the audience? <laughs> yeah, he can be. Let me one second. Yeah. All right, this first one right here is kind of common. Where's that, that first number? Where, what does that say? What, what, what country is that? That's what city and country? Union City, New Jersey. That's New Jersey, right? That second one right there, what does that say? Russia. Okay. What does that one say? China. Right. I don't even know where that is. Boshan, Yunnan, China. <laughs> yeah. um, what does that say? Germany. Okay. These are oh. the kind of calls that come in. And this I is just my phone. Man. That's not everybody else in the company. Was, uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the online presence is actually needed if you want to grow mm. to that market scale. Not everybody has to do that. He's not going to sell cookies to people in Germany. Mm. So he don't need to go well, not that yet. far. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. They'll come here and they'll find him. He probably is going to have a store somewhere close to the, to the cruise ships. Next thing you know, he has his product on the cruise ship in some local store, and they're buying that stuff. These are cookies made in the Bahamas. Yes. But you don't have to start off with that. You right. grow to that. Right. I wouldn't have gotten, I would have never had these kind of calls two, two, three years ago. No, because the company was still small. So I was doing what I had to do, walking around, handing out my flyers. But I know where I wanted to be, and I had that dream. And yes, I am embarrassed at the first product. Had a little boat going down there with yeah. eight people in it and the boat getting tossed around in the ocean and people coming back and they're like, oh my God, that was horrible. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you that. That was horrible. I want all my money back. We've heard that many, 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 many times. Many times we've actually worked for free. A whole day on the sea. Mm -hmm. Boat full of gas. And you got to give people back all their money. These things happen. You've got to be willing to sacrifice. I'm not saying that happens to everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Katisha had to give any refunds. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wow, see? Is it fast? It's a hot country. I just was about to say. But that's that's how it is. That's the nature of the business. Wow. That's crazy. But yeah, man, that's that's how I got started. Yeah. More questions? This question is for, I guess, anyone on the panel or if you all can uh, touch on it. First of all, Stefan Simonet, uh, Simonet's Auto, that's the business I'm trying to revive. So when you talk about Ingrams, they kind of like my family too. <laughs> but, um, you know, what I wanted to basically speak on, I just moved back here from the States and I do see that the customer service uh, in my country is not great at all. I could tell you about a million experiences I had mm -hmm. with BTC. So what I'd like to ask you guys, what do you do to go above and beyond? Because like you said, there's other people doing your business, there's other people doing cookies, other people doing marketing, websites. What customer experience or what do you do to go above and beyond for your customers so that they would feel warm and, and, and valued? Well, I think, I think he listed some of the things um, because you have to, like you said, sometimes you have to do stuff for free. Like if you, at the end of the day, you have to make sure. And what my saying is, I don't believe the customer is always right, but I believe at the end of every transaction, they should leave happy and satisfied, no matter what. Even if they're wrong, you want them to leave at least happy and satisfied. So you have to make some you know, adjustments. and some. You have to take some losses sometimes to make sure that your customer is happy because most people, you know how negative news spread. If they have a bad experience, they can tell everybody. If they have a good experience, uh, they might tell one person, two people, or whatever. So you have to keep that in mind. You understand? And, and what I like to do, I judge what, what, I, what would I want from this experience? You know what I mean? How would I like to feel? And I make sure that my customers, like I said, every transaction, they are happy all the time. Customers are first. That's who brings in the money for you. So you have to make sure that they come first. Make sure they come first all the time. Yeah, I can, I can chime in on that as well. Um, I know one thing that works, um, reward customers for loyalty. You have a customer that continuously buys your product, that customer trusts you and believes in you. At some point or the other, offer that customer something extra. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be anything lavish. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say you service in cars. All right, the customer already been coming to you now for about six months. I don't know, your next service, half off, man. Because by six months, you have a whole onslaught of people who she's already told, they come into you. Give her $30 off, man. I don't know what you're charging. 40 50 60 70 whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That $70 is an investment. Yes. You ain't giving that away. That's an investment in your company. In the relationship. In the relationship. Mm -hmm. that, and what she's going to do, man, he gave me a discount the other day. Listen, man, he's the best in Nassau. Mm -hmm. And... Anytime, anytime something goes off, or you might, 
at one point you might make a mistake. You might forget to put change the oil in the woman. I don't know. So you might leave. You might leave when 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 cap off. You know what I'm saying? She's gonna remember that time. Yeah. You gave it a little deal, and every yes. time I go to me, always in a pleasant mood. Yes. Anytime I need him, my car running by, he came to me and he mm-hmm. fixed my car and blah 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 blah. They're gonna remember that. But if all it, if all I do is come to you mm-hmm. and pay you, and pick up my car, we don't have no kind of business relationship. All you is just another person who's do something for me. But mm-hmm. the first time you mess up, you done. I got into the other guy because mm-hmm. me and you don't have a relationship. So you gotta you gotta build relationships with people. Mm-hmm. Um, two points on that. The first is speed. And you will find that your response time can affect your customer service. Um, I actually spoke with somebody about this today. How many times have you walked into a business establishment and the person sitting there waiting for you to greet them? Every and they night. suck in their teeth and mad because you ain't say good afternoon or whatever. Whereas they're the employee. They should be initiating the conversation with you to make you feel like you want to spend your money here. Um, when you message a company on Facebook and they respond within 30 seconds, that always makes you feel a bit better about uh, pursuing them for their business. So even, for example, if you have a Facebook page, there's an a autoresponder. We don't usually advise you to use it, but if you're just starting out and you have other obligations, mm-hmm. put an autoresponder on to say, we thank you for sending your message. We'll get back to you within X amount of time. And the customer can expect that, whether it's eight hours or eight minutes. The second thing is communication. Always, always communicate with the customer regardless of what's happening. Everything is not going to go right all the time. You said you wanted an order uh, or you said you wanted something done by X time. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Let the customer know that prior to. Don't let the customer have to contact you to find out what's going on with your product or your service. If you reach out to them, they're more willing and able to probably accommodate whatever it is that you're dealing with. So set up systems in place also for when things start to go wrong or they're a bit delayed or whatever the case may be. Put something in place to communicate with the customer. Call them up. Mr. Simonette, I know I said I was going to have your car. Don't call 459 and you said you was going to have the car ready 5 o'clock. You already know what time. You already know yourself and how you do your work to know by 2 o'clock, you know what? This ain't going to be happening. Don't worry about the customer's reaction. Get ahead of the problem. Get ahead of the game. Call them up. I know it's 2 o'clock. I know I said it's going to be ready for 5 o'clock. This is why it won't be ready. And this is what we'll be able to do for you as a result of. And they will be more inclined to work with you than if you wait until 4.59 to say their car, whatever, will not be ready. And then you get the negative review day and head notes group on Facebook talking about your business and all that other stuff. Right? Shameless plug again, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, speed, 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 and communication with the customer. Okay, one second. Um, guys, I just want to tell everybody thank you before everybody starts one one and out the door. Um, Greg, Gail, Travis, Dario, thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. This is wonderful. One more question. How do you maintain a competitive advantage in each of your respective market? Again, I think we just explained that. Make it, yeah, go, listen, trust go me. Ahead, trust me, because, go ahead, sorry, Travis, go ahead. <laughs> so, you got to think about, if you want to maintain competitive advantage, because there'll be people that pop up in your right. industry or doing what you're doing, you always got to think, how could you add more value? Um, in most cases, at least like what I do, a lot of what I do is consulting as well. So knowing that, okay, there's a newcomer in town, the one competitive advantage is they don't have that relationship I currently have with that, that client. Even every day, you're supposed to be building on that relationship with the client. Um, and it's all, like, like it is, it's essentially a relationship. You know each other, you could feel each other out, you know what's wrong. But usually, if you want to keep that edge, think about what your clients or customers next three years looks like and try to build something for that 
So like if you're selling something tangible, that may come in the form of like, okay, what problem does this solve for my client? Or, you know, it might be like, what model do I build around this? Whereas a loyalty reward and stuff like that. Th those things, along with your brand name, they all build equity for you. If you're consulting, it'd be like, hey, you know, what, what problem might my client have in the next three, four, five years? Think about that now versus being reactive when that client comes to you and says, hey, you know, this is the issue that I'm having. You always wanna have that ahead of time, just like what Gail said. Yeah, to add to that also, knowledge. Um, what you're doing right now is increasing your competitive advantage. Um, you can learn anything online. As Dario mentioned, he went on Udemy. There's a lot of sites right now that offer you, in addition to what you're doing here, free education about anything you want to do. You could literally YouTube anything. Um, with each of the respective industries, there are always changes within the industry. There's always improvements. There's always advancements. Um, with Greg, he was able to make some changes in terms of, I always use his flower. He always tells me a flower doesn't really matter, right? But I always use his flower as an example. If you know that there is so another brand out there that may be more cost affordable or cost effective for your business, but it will add 10 delicious points to your cookies, let's say, right? Now you're ahead of the curve. You increase your competitive advantage by having that knowledge. With Dario, he mentioned now in terms of his boats, he has the fastest boats in the harbor. That is not by accident. He could have stuck with those little dinghies that he may have first started out with, as he mentioned, right? And he could have used them, and the business would have been okay. But he knows that in order to move the business to where, the, to where it needs to be, he needs the fastest boats in the harbor right. in order to provide the level of service and the, um, the product that he wants to provide for people. That's how he stays uh, at a or has a, maintains a competitive advantage against uh, the other persons who may be doing it. And they can do what you do. Everybody's always going to do something that you do. They're never going to be able to do it like you. They are never, ever, ever going to be able to offer what it is that you have to offer. So knowledge, always try to, in your industry, find out what's going on. Every day, do an internet search. Latest news in food and beverage. Latest news in hairstyles. Latest news in whatever. And search and look online. Uh, but everything is online. But yeah. Pinterest, Instagram, you could search keywords on Instagram and all of the photos will come up with information for whatever it is that you could possibly need. You could see what people are doing 10 years ahead of the Bahamas because you know we 10 years behind, right? <laughs> so what they're doing now is where you need to be mm -hmm. and then you can figure out how to get to that point to make yourself better as well. And just quickly, I want to add to that, don't fall for... Uh, m making adjustments based on other people, right? right? Stay true to who you are and what your company represents. Apple don't adjust the windows. They compete with themselves. So make sure you continue to compete with yourself and what you want for your business. Keep improving on what you want your business to be. Now, you could make smaller, you know, you notice this, this one price is this. Don't compromise too much and don't be making adjustments because of them. You know what I mean? Stay true to your business and what you represent. Let them adjust to you. If you guys are thinking about um, starting a business, a Facebook group. There's a Facebook group for everything. There's a Facebook group for bath bombs. If you want to start your own bath bomb business, there's a Facebook group for um, creating your own soap, creating your own candles. Um, you could even create candles with little flowers embedded in them, but like everybody just want to create regular candles. Right. But um, <laughs> you could do everything no online. Shade. When, I want, when I first wanted to start um, my <laughs> consulting business or my popsicle business, I went online first. All the information was already there because I wasn't the first one who did, who did it. Mm -hmm. And we're hardly ever the first ones who did it. We just got to find someone who did it and find a way to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Guys, how many persons in this room have an, have an iPhone? Two persons. Well, this is a Samsung well, one. I, well, yeah. I, well, I, well, I, well, I'm particularly I'm choosing iPhone for a reason. Have you guys ever seen an app on your phone called iTunes U? Mm -hmm. You ever opened it? You, know what, you don't know what that is? Free online university with open lectures, downloadable content, media, books, the full classwork, and you can actually sit in live classroom settings, free from Apple. No, iBooks is only books. iTunes U is free university courses. Right now I'm doing creative writing. 
buzz off. Man, you want to do everything. Cheers. <laughs> I don't blame you. I, I thought that was a shameless plug too. That ain't no plug for nobody, right? <laughs> In terms of self-development and motivation, uh, how wide do you guys read? Uh, what's the breadth of it? How do you stay motivated to continue with this entrepreneurial spirit? Because Stuff like this. Each of you, <laughs> each of you um, spoke about the troubles you had. Well, I don't, I don't read. I'm just like this. I don't like read. I tell people. Pause you ask what we read? <laughs> hey, don't encourage I, that, I, though. I, oh. Don't encourage that. No, listen. It's, well, it's, not, it's, it's, yeah, it's not a matter of encouraging it. I'm being honest. And yeah. people are different. Some I people love to read. I can I can zoom. He loves to read. Yeah. I don't. Three um, readers. If it's boring, I, I'm gone. Stuff, exactly. exactly. See, stuff. that's the thing. Consuming if people consume information differently. Right. The whole point is to consume the information. You watch the li- you watch live Grant, right? I now watch Grant. Grant. I watch Gary Vaynerchuk. Right. I watch The Prophet. I watch Billion Dollar Buyer. So I watch all yeah. kind of people. I watch uh, uh, interviews with Mark Cuban, Damon John, Shark Tank. I consume the information. Right. I just they don't read it. Up. So right. these are how we stay motivated. What you do is you, you go and you watch these videos. These mo- these Ga- you know Gary Vaynerchuk? Gary Vaynerchuk? You don't know Gary Vaynerchuk? We can send Kentisha wow. a list. Google Gary y'all Vaynerchuk. Next ho- y'all next homework? Yeah, we can send it to Kentisha. Oh, just Gary, yeah. The last name is hard to spell. Yeah. You can put Gary V. V. V-E-E. V-E-E. Yeah. 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 It's a big one. Yes. He's run on. Yes. He's run on. Yeah, so you have, you have yeah. a lot of people on YouTube that you can look up. And they have a lot of motivational videos yeah. Yeah. where they have where they having speeches, conversations, just things that get you thinking and motivated to keep going. So there are many ways podcast. you can do it. Podcast. podcast. Free, free podcast. Like the Entrepreneur There's to Entrepreneur the podcast. Shameless yeah. Yeah. plug. Please search it on Facebook. Get the TED Talks out. Yes. All motivation. TED Talks it's free. That. It sounded like he was talking about fair setting. Uh, well, yeah. a, a TED talk I watched where a guy spoke about fair setting. Speak about all the things you fair. Yeah, you got you know. to. So, and like it's no shortage. It's no shortage of resources you can find online, whether in a general sense or a broad sense. Um, but when, it, but a big component of motivation as well is um, you gotta you gotta find the reasons why for you too. Like me, I have like why things I want to do like I want I want to build a tiny home eventually I want to <laughs> stay and build a tiny home but I also have things like if like if I I want to be able to be in a position oh where I could help pay for my nephew's college tuition if I have to nice I just when you have no tiny home construction companies here yeah. everybody hey. wants to be a contractor to build right. a regular house but nobody could afford to buy a house anymore no. right. my so it's, it's stuff I like that mm-hmm. where like I don't, everybody have different battles and different things. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, coming. So hopefully, if nobody gets to it yet, no, right? like, like hopefully, building my own home, I might understand it and so. study it and then flip it. Mm-hmm. That's a high yeah. sense. Yeah. But I mean, like, everybody have their different things too. Like, you gotta some days, especially when you're doing it on your own. Like, you don't get out of bed, and you don't have a choice. You, if you want, if you want to get to B, you gotta do A. And to stay motivated like that, you got to find the reasons why. That might be some for someone you love, uh, some mighty goal that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, but that sense of motivation, you always got to tap into that. When your willpower goes down to zero, you got to like bounce back into that. So find that find that reason for you why. And then no matter what resource change, because Gary Vee might come today and he might leave tomorrow, you your success should not be based on Gary Vee. Right. Type of thing. Right. So yeah. Um, just to add to that also find communities that will be able to support you when you do have those shift moments back. when you need that extra motivation shift the like shift the culture um, for example there's something called a pitch night that we do where you come in you pitch your business idea to a group of people you know the first thing Bahamians say they get my idea right that's not exactly you don't have to feel that way around other entrepreneurs because other entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs actually want to succeed in what they're doing and they also want to assist you succeed in whatever it is that you're doing so find like like like-minded people that you'll be able to talk about a business with and they don't look at you strange or they don't look at you funny when you're talking about doing this and that they encourage your ideas and help you explore new avenues um, and things that you can do so look for communities of people that will be able to lift you up a bit help support you um, and that can be a great motivator as well. Yeah, and focus on the macro. Don't worry about micro stuff. They get, they get disappointed. Focus on the big picture. Know what your why is. Why are you doing what you're doing? And I can tell you, 
I like to keep it real. Um, as you gain more responsibility and you get deeper and deeper into your company, you know what's going to be your greatest motivator? Them bills, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Them bills you have any, coming. Sorry, Rad. Have a chat. No, I only planned. Let's say. <laughs> that, that was you, my big motivation. You can cast sleep. You can skip out of your bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. You'll be yeah. tossing and turning trying to think. Bro, listen, I ain't had nothing all week. I got to go there and find these people tomorrow. Something got to happen. Mm-hmm. When them bills start hitting, yeah. aim more motivation than yes. that, bro. Either you pay the bill or the light going off. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, read. Um, there's a book called The Power of Broke that I've been raving about for the past couple of month, months. D- Damon John. By yeah. Damon John, yeah. who um, is one of the people from Shark Tank. But it's called The Power of Broke. And trust me, yeah. that will help you get everything together. As I was reading it, I had ideas come to my mind mm. that motivated me to do other things that I wasn't even concentrating on at the time. But yeah, The Power of Broke. By that. And then, then also add to that the power of habit um, probably he, it's not his it's photos probably on the front yeah, his picture is probably on it his photos on the front yeah actually you really remind yourself if you pay attention to that question I want I co- the two guys that said they think about their business all day you all mind telling us what the what what a general idea of what the business is because you've been thinking about it all day I want you to share it with us give him give a mic right there from my players <laughs> You ready? Uh, my be- I, my name is uh, Taran Geary. Yes, sir. Uh, my business is Fix Nasty Automotive. What? Fix Nasty, <laughs> fix nasty, <laughs> nasty Automotive. automotive. <laughs> we get you going. Yeah. Wow. Mobile mechanic. I tell you one thing. You can show up the market. Sex out. That's, that's a good a idea. Yeah, and you know what I like to say? Mobile mechanic. Mobile. People nasty. get lazier and lazier and busier and busier at the same time. So they don't have time to go no drive to this place, wait for the mechanic to fix it. So if you could come to me and fix my things, I'm willing to pay that extra yes. that you can charge to come to me because it saves me time. A lot of people value time more nowadays. I don't know so where you till six. People, so I don't know where you till six in the morning. So all night, I free you need oil change right now. I, I, I down. Yeah, that's the that's right out of do it. All night. <laughs> all night. All night. Always. That's mm-hmm. right out of dude. I like that. He said he can't sell his own yet. He, he, yeah, he, yeah. He's still working on this. Oh, and um, I also want to do hydro dipping. Which you is... You got to explain what that is. I know what that is. It's an electronic base of water. Right. And you put a uh, film over it. And you could take like car rims, body parts. Ah, you dip it in. Like yeah, water yeah. transfer. Yeah, I've nice. seen that before. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's expensive. That's cool. Yeah, it is. It is. But use your mobile mechanic money. Oh, you know that. To pay for what you need <laughs> to get. <laughs> and right. that's how that's making it happen. Because you know a lot of people they'll get the third. They be like, but how much this machine costs? I don't have this money to pay for this. Well, you have another business that you love doing. Use that money to fund the other one. You can be bigger than bad boys right now. Fix the wi- auto every corner. I wish you, my brother. We getting there. We getting there. I wish you. So, <laughs> like truck that. on the so, road. So what I see actually are two future entrepreneurs. You guys are going to make it because finding a good mechanic like that. in Nassau is hard to find. Um, even the shops. I can tell you right now. Right yes. now I have my Reliable car. Reliable too. Jeez. Reliable. Right now I have my car in the shop um, getting, getting the head repaired. I had to go to four different large mechanic shops. To find out if they would take my car, they would not. Mm-hmm. The first thing they said, these guys have, like talking about, they have the big rocks and everything to lift the car up and do everything to get the diagnosis. They do not do head repair. It's like, you don't do what? Mm-hmm. They don't do head repair. As much head as get blown in this town? Greg. <laughs> but I mean, car. Are there mechanic the shops? The are there mechanic shops? Or, them, or like, mechanic, like the, your cousin mechanic or your Grammy mechanic or your cousin? Yeah. <laughs> they mechanic, they mechanic. I, well, I've been through that phase in my life, and I lost too much. Amen. Dealing with mechanics on the side of the road. I'm talking about you guys. Look at what the market is yeah. not doing and specialize on that. For God's sakes, don't bring another AC shop online. They get a bunch of those. Don't bring yeah. another muffler shop. You know Muffler World dominating that market and Minute Muffler. Don't bring another oil change, another quick oil change, another service shop. Everybody is servicing. Things like that, there's only like one or two places you can get a, a, a head machined. Mm-hmm. I know you guys know what that is because you guys are into mechanics. Ain't plenty of people doing that. All right? Hydro dipping. Ain't nobody doing that. Do that. Yeah. All right? And don't so slunk. Look, don't, yeah, and don't slunk. Don't slunk. I don't talk look. it, right? I don't talk it. So look, at what slunk. <laughs> look, look, <laughs> look at what the other shops are not doing and, 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 and work on speed. And I can give you another tip, too. If you are going to get into that industry where you're going to be repairing cylinder heads, 
repair your cylinder heads in your shop. Don't send your cylinder head somewhere else to be repaired. Because from, yeah, from even back in the day, even when I was at Quality Auto, they take the cylinder head off. They sent it to a guy named Sawyer's Machine Shop on Dazzle Street. That's no longer open. Huh? That they used to be the best, but they, they ain't there no more. So they're now using a welding shop somewhere off Full Road to send your stuff. You've got to wait for them to get to your stuff and then bring it back. No, do everything right on the spot. All right, so that's an idea for you. That's free. I'm throwing it up. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? Everybody look good. Now's your time to shine. You better. We judge right. next oh, time. No more chicken jackets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. No more weed stars. There's a thing. It's called market saturation. Jesus, keep keys closed if it closed. Don't reopen that. Please don't reopen that. Because people, you have crazy people in the world, you know. <laughs> okay, everyone, if we're all done, if you don't have any more questions, once again, thank you so much, Greg, Gail, thank you guys. Travis, thank you. Mario. Thank you so very, very much once thank again. You. Um, you, can, you can also follow all of them on Facebook. Yes, please. You have at PopStop242. They will be at the Food Fest. This weekend, the 14th and the 15th. Find us. Keep cool. Not in a business capacity. <laughs> we also have Dario McKinney from Island Escapes. You can find him on Facebook at Island Escapes. You, you can also find Greg at the Cookie Caterer with those amazing photos. Just click on him. Press buy. He's right there. Gail Hanna with the Catalyst Group, a marketing company. I encourage you guys to check her out because if you are starting your own business, Gail has all the avenues when it comes to marketing and everything else that you will need. Then we have Travis. He's like the hub of entrepreneurs. All entrepreneurs end, end up meeting at Shift the Culture. Yeah, he's That's where we met. He's yeah. the entrepreneur they end up father. At pitch night. He's yeah. the godfather. So if you guys, <laughs> he has like a Vista Lounge. Oh. On the day of my business is starting. Soon, right? Yeah. Starbucks? Starbucks? This week, eh? Or next week? No, the 21st. The 21st. Meetup is October 21st. Yeah, come to meet up. Right. Starbucks Harbor Bay, 10 to 11.30. Yes. Yeah. Good group of good group of entrepreneurs that just share ideas and. I know you could also follow them on Facebook. They tell you all about their events on Facebook as well. No way. Ten. 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 The meetup is ten. The meetup is ten to eleven thirty, and then we we're scheduling pitch night eventually soon. We just need to find a venue. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so follow everybody on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a great one. Um, your homework is to bring your business ideas for next class. That was for this. That that was supposed to be for Thursday. Make sure you have your business ideas for Thursday. And guys, okay? before I, leave, I just okay. <laughs> and before I leave, I, we close out every show because we're still on the show. Oh, and yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we close out every show <laughs> with the saying that's on my shirt. So if you would join us, yeah. losers make, make excuses. excuses. Winners, winners make, make adjustments. adjustments. Always remember that, and you'll always be successful. Peace. Thank you for doing Perfect. it.